and welcome to the 2015 Teacher of the Year Studio Interviews. This program will introduce you to each of our school's Teacher of the Year. Hi, I'm Paige Jerome. Let's get right to it with our first teacher from Savannah Ridge Elementary. Hi, Ms. Rice. Hi, how are you, Paige? Nice to see you today. Nice to see you. And we also have with Andrea Rice, we have her principal, LaTanya Green. Thank you for joining us, LaTanya. Thank you. And we're excited for you to be here to um, share a light on, your, on what's happening in your classroom and um, just your background. So with that, let's go ahead and um, congratulate you, Andrea, first and foremost on Thank your you. award. Thank you very much. And have you introduced your grade and what you teach at Savannah Ridge. I am actually a kindergarten teacher at Savannah Ridge Elementary and I've been doing that for 15 years. All at Savannah Ridge in kindergarten. <laughs> awesome. And in your kindergarten class, you teach all subject areas? I do, right? all subject areas. Um, science, social studies, math, reading, writing. Social skills, social learning, skills. kindergarten, <laughs> all, all, everything. Skills. Yes, everything, <laughs> absolutely. And where did you attend school um, for college and what was your program of study? I went to um, Florida Atlantic University and I actually had a degree in elementary education and then later on got my certification in early childhood education. Okay, terrific. And what is your favorite part, Andrea, of teaching? <laughs> um, the funny stories. But I think I have to say the most important part and, and the most meaningful to me is when those kids' light bulbs go off. And that might be cliche-ish, but that just really is. It almost brings me to tears sometimes when I see some of those kids that have been struggling so long that they just go, oh, I finally got it, Miss Rice. So it just, it's, it, that's the priceless moment for me. Yeah, it warms your heart when it you does. see that connection for learning. Absolutely. And there's so many different stages in a kindergarten classroom. Absolutely. They come... Um, just so new to everything when they walk into the kindergarten room. So I know that you see a lot of a lot of those lot light bulbs throughout absolutely. the year. Absolutely. And how uh, do you infuse technology into your daily lessons? Um, I'm actually excited about it this year. This year, Miss Green was um, kind enough to give elementary students the Elmo instead of just the upper grade. So that's a new piece of technology that we were able to use. Um, I use that for reading books aloud. I use it for demonstrating writing strategies. Um, I have my students even come up and demonstrate some math skills that we're working on. Um, I also use the projector that goes with it and hook up my laptop and we watch some videos that might go along with some teaching elements like for science or math as well through Think um, Central. Um, I use, they use it for um, research sometimes on topics that we're doing. So I use a, a lot of that in different aspects and of course the students have it for their center activities as well. Right, terrific. And have you always known that you wanted to be a teacher? I have. Um, this is an, like another cliche. Um, I was, my parents bought me these old fold out desks that used to have the flip top and I used to sit there and teach my little brother, you know, for the longest. Um, so I think somewhere deep down I always knew that I wanted to be a teacher. And I definitely knew I had an inkling to be, do something with children. And along that pathway from when you were really little until when you started teaching, is there someone that was an inspiration for you to be a teacher? There were several. Um, a lot of people say, oh, well, I can remember my elementary school teacher back, you know, Miss So-and-so. But a lot of the elementary teachers don't stand out for me. It was more so in high school. Um, I had Mr. Guy. I had Mr. Yui. I had um, Miss Gaines. I had um, just so many that were in high school that actually took the initiative to make sure I understood everything and made you know, learning more engaging for me when I was struggling. Absolutely. Those are the ones we definitely remember. Um, those unique um, learning lessons and um, hands-on mm -hmm. and like you said, new when you needed more support in certain areas. Absolutely. The ones that leave that implant on us. And um, we have so many new teachers coming in. What advice would you as a seasoned teacher be, be able to offer for our new teachers? My best advice would be don't hesitate to ask for help. Doesn't matter whether it's with discipline, with assignments, lessons, you need to be able to ask, don't be afraid. That's going to help you the most. Um, you learn from your colleagues and even so I'm a veteran teacher, I always ask my colleagues for help as well as administration if it needs to go that far. But don't be afraid to help, to ask for help. You, you really need to do that. Yeah, and all of our school buildings have a wealth of resources of people with different strengths. Absolutely. So, absolutely. And Ms. Green, when you visit into Ms. Rice's classroom, what do you see and hear in her classroom? Wow, what I hear, what I see. I see um, 
an educator. I see a mother um, who has captured just the captured children and children into learning. Um, I see someone who really cares about children. I see children who are engaged in lessons. And sometimes that can be quite difficult to do at any grade level, but especially at kindergarten. <laughs> um, that's a whole different ball game, as we say, <laughs> for kindergarten. Um, but working with those children, and I think it's just the passion and dedication um, and just her time and energy that she puts into ensuring that those children um, are, like I said, engaged in lessons, um, that they are learning, um, just building that community within her classroom for, with a very safe learning environment. Um, she just has a handle on those things. I know I could, as an administrator, I could not ask for a better teacher to have in kindergarten and the things that she brings to kindergarten and to watch those little babies from where they start to where they end to progress and move to first grade. Um, I'm truly blessed and truly honored to have someone such as Miss Rice to be Thank a you. part of the Savannah Ridge family. Absolutely. And um, we know that you mentioned several things. You work with technology and what other activities, Miss Green, um, do you see? I know leadership you mentioned just now um, that Andrea participates in throughout campus. Everything. <laughs> she is. She is that she is that person that you go home at the end of the day thinking like, oh, I know if I ask her one more thing. <laughs> um, but she is someone, um, and she is not the only teacher um, at Savannah Ridge for that. But she is truly one that stands out um, into that very that commitment piece, that dedicated piece. There is not one thing that that I can ask her that she is not willing to do. Um, she's very proactive. Um, Mrs. Rice is always willing to lend a hand, and not only to myself, but to her colleagues, to students, taking children into her classroom. Um, if I needed a sit-in on a committee, if she needs to step up for someone, um, and although I may have asked her three days in a row, Ms. Rice, can you do this for me? Can you do this for me? She, the, what's important to me and what's so refreshing is that she always says yes with a smile. Um, and she puts her heart and soul into it, whatever it may be, no matter how tired she is, no matter how long the day has been, no matter how early in the morning it is, um, she is always willing to give 110%. And I think each and every day that we get up and we get ready and get ready to come to work, 110% is what we have to give to children. And Ms. Rice absolutely, absolutely 110% gives all that she has to children and to the to our families and the community at Savannah Ridge. Absolutely. And so not only impacting your 18, 20, 22 students that you serve, but impacting on so many other mm -hmm. so many other avenues of the school so that you're able to support students in all grade levels with different mm -hmm. leadership. Is there something particular, um, Ms. Rice, that you wanted to share, maybe um, um, a professional learning community or something that's happening specific um, that's new for you this year on campus? Is there? Not really on, on new on campus. I mean, I know Ms. Green has um, raised the bar for us as teachers there. She wants to make sure that all of us have an understanding of unpacking those standards and how they relate to one another and how they kind of spiral back so that we all can kind of see where one grade level is coming from into the next and how if we don't get it at that grade level it does affect the grade levels to come. So um, that's probably the newest aspect. And that's really so vital mm -hmm. so that you can see that whole vertical continuum of how everything each grade level mm -hmm. does affects that next transition into the new grade level. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And Ms. Green, is there anything before we close the interview that you would like to share that we didn't mention already. And you know what I can tell you something about Miss Rice and um, she is a risk taker. She's a risk taker. She is. Um, she has a knack for kindergarten but she is not afraid to step out of kindergarten and help on all accords, all fronts because one thing that I do know about her that's evident that actually just radiates throughout that building whether it are in the community um, at certain events. Um, in her heart it's children. It's about children, um, and at the end of the day, it's why we do what we do. Um, and she is a true leader. Um, 
we were not only honored at Savannah Ridge that she is our Teacher of the Year, but this district will be honored and very proud to have her serve as Teacher of the Year for our district. Um, and she will be a very good representation of that and what we expect in our teachers here in our county. So again, as I said earlier, I mean, I'm blessed and I am truly above and beyond honored to have someone as Miss Andrea Rice to serve and work for Savannah Ridge Elementary. Thank you very much. Appreciate that, <laughs> Absolutely. And we're equally as honored to have mm -hmm. both of you here. We again congratulate you on the award. Thank you. And we also look forward to following the progress. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Thanks for joining us. We will be right back with another Teacher of the Year. What does it take to start something? A little time. A little exercise. A little laugh. A little adventure. A little help. That's all it takes to make a big impact. As he always talks about, he had people in his life that really helped him out, and he wants to be that person in my life. Just like he is, I was like that at 14. I know exactly what it means yeah. to be a 14 year old guy. I think that's why we have a good relationship. It's fun and cool and nice. You get to see like how personality develops. Our friendship is good. At Big Brothers Big Sisters, a little bit of your support can go a long way towards making matches like these happen. Start something today at bigbrothersbigsisters.org slash start something. Welcome back to the 2015 Teacher of the Year Studio Interviews. Now from Southern Oaks Middle School. We're happy to have Tiffany Barrett. Welcome, Tiffany. Thank you. Nice Thank to be you. here. Nice to have you. And also, um, Lisa Sullivan, Tiffany's principal. Yeah. We're excited to have you as Thank well. Thank you for having us. And um, first, Tiffany, just congratulations Thank on you. your honor. Thank you very much. Your award. We're happy that you're here with us today. Yes, I'm very excited to be here. Great. Um, go ahead and tell us, Tiffany, about the grade and the subject that you teach. Sure. I teach um, eighth grade U.S. History at Southern Oaks Middle School. Okay, terrific. And what does that encompass as far as the types of history? Is it? Um, we cover United States history. We start out with Christopher Columbus and we move our way up to Reconstruction of the Civil War. Awesome. Okay, and where did you attend school for college? Um, I'm actually from Connecticut, so I went to Quinnipiac University. It's in Hamden, Connecticut, where I majored in psychology and minored in history. Okay, so, fantastic. Yeah. And what is your favorite part of teaching? My favorite part of teaching is is probably the seeing the growth along the way. Um, sometimes we get so caught up in numbers and, and data, but we have to celebrate the many success that the kids make along the way um, and just hitting those milestones. Um, so that's probably my best, my favorite part. Just being able um, to see those Yeah, matched. and along with just building relationships with the kids and, and getting to know them and it's yeah. it's really it's great and having taught sixth seventh and eighth it's so nice to see the to see the growth that yeah. they make and eighth is a great is a great year yeah it's it's great you yeah. have to get them ready for high school and it's it's great terrific yeah and have you always um, known that you've wanted to be a teacher I have <laughs> I have always always wanted to be a teacher um, ever since I was younger just always playing school um, writing on the chalkboard which are non-existent these <laughs> days. <laughs> but um, yeah, just always being around kids, taking child development classes in high school. Um, so yeah, just it's always been my passion. And along that passion and pathway, was there any specific person who inspired you to be a teacher? Um, I, it was. My, uh, my second grade teacher, Misty Francesco, just really stood out for me. She always came in with a smile on her face and just always was, was there for us and loved us and, and cared for us. And I just knew one day I wanted to be a teacher and, and be like her and hopefully be that person for kids. Right. Welcoming them into their classroom, yeah. showing them that love. Yeah. Absolutely. Lucky every day to be able to do that. Yeah. It, it really is a, it's a great feeling. They, they look up to you. They depend on you. You're that one constant constant face for them. Yeah, every, every day, day check in, check out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, awesome. So. And how do you infuse technology into your daily routine and in, in your history? Sure. Um, we start out our lesson every day with a PowerPoint um, with a bell ringer. So that is one way that we use it. Um, a resource that we also use at our school is something called Flocabulary. 
Yeah, it's, have you heard of it? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's an educational hip hop resource. Um, so you can just type in your concepts. If you type in Civil War, um, it comes out with a rap with all the lyrics on it. And it's not just a rap, you know, I mean, they've got, um, you can have an intro to it, you can do it without the lyrics, um, it comes with questions, wow. assessments, so it's a really, it's a great way to get them into the lesson, because they can be kind of, you know, history. They're that not that engaging. into it sometimes. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Um, we often go to our computer labs a lot uh, to work on history fair. Um, and using um, online assessments to get our kids ready for the FCAT. We're trying to do a lot of our testing online so that they're not, you know, surprised when they have to do that. Right, sure. So. And now the history fair, that, that, is that winding kind of it's up now? Winding so down, you've been yep. working on that for mm -hmm. Yeah, we've been working portion. on it since September. Okay, terrific. So we're kind of on our last couple weeks. Terrific. They're due in February. Okay, so, so yeah. how's that going for your it's kids? It's good, it's good. Um, we're going to bring them to our SAC committee next month and kind of let them help us with the choosing uh, of the projects process, but the kids seem to be really into it. Um, I've got a couple websites this year, which is new, because a lot of the kids usually just pick right. a board, because right. that's exhibit easy. Or, yeah, mm -hmm. so a lot of them are kind of branching out and, and doing the websites, which is nice to see. That is nice. That's why I love History yeah. Fair, because it really lets kids do a visual interpretation, yeah. but then you have the documentary portion where... Mm -hmm. It's bringing that technology layer in for kids that, you know, that really yeah. ignites their learning. And then you have the really website. creativity a little mm -hmm. bit. Absolutely. Yeah. And the performance. I've seen some yeah. great performances. I always too. try to push the performance. Mm -hmm. But um, it's nice to see even going to the district history fair, a lot of the high school <coughs> kids choose the performances. So it's nice to see how they just take a, a concept and create a play. Yeah. It's, awesome. it's really nice to see. Yeah, that's very cool. I love yeah. History Fair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now we have lots of new teachers coming on board. What advice would you offer a new teacher um, coming in? Definitely to stick with it. Um, I'm actually a mentor for a mentee at, um, our, at my school um, and I just been you, got, you just got to be there for them and let them know that it's okay to make mistakes. Um, you know every day the lesson you have started out with the big at the beginning of the day might not go as planned. So you've got to be able to kind of bounce back and, you know, change what you need to, to change. And definitely just to, to stick with it, you know, Absolutely. because you're, you're going to have bad days. You're going to have struggling days. But, you know, the end is in sight. And just making it through your first year is success in itself. Absolutely. And every day is a new day. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Every so class period. Every class yeah. period. Every class sure. period is a new, is a new Start. That's a great point because when you're thinking about middle school or high school, it is. Yeah. Every, is it 90 minutes? It is, 90 we have 90-minute minute blocks. Okay. So, and you know, you might you have this brilliant theme in your head of how your lesson's going to go, and even starting it out, you're like, okay, that didn't go as planned. And I, I also think letting them know that you know they might look at a veteran teacher like they don't make mistakes, but you know we're not. Our lessons flop just as much as anybody else's do. Mm -hmm. So just and to let them know that we're all. The same. Right. And I think that, like you had said, too, um, mentoring um, is so important. Yeah. And so the mentors, mm -hmm. they're all letting them know that as well. Yeah. So they see that they're, they're da having the same challenges mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then having to be a quick on their feet yeah. to recap or yeah. change things as you go. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, Miss Sullivan, when you visit in Tiffany's room, mm -hmm. what types of things do you see and hear in her classroom? I love going to Tiffany's classroom. I love the energy that's in that classroom. I love that I never know what I'm going to be walking into, whether it's centers, whether the kids are sitting on the floor. It's always something different going on. What I love most about Miss Barrett's classroom, though, is I think it's um, a credit to her that kids come to us with all sorts of things, all sorts of baggage, all sorts of positives, all sorts of negatives. Miss Barrett can find the positive in any child I give her. and. It's just so rewarding to go in there and see that child that's struggling someplace else be so successful in Miss Barrett's room. It's very reaffirming to, to visit Miss Barrett's room, and I, I, I love going there. And that is a true gift. Yeah, it is a gift, To be absolutely. able mm -hmm. to, to look at every circumstance, and every circumstance will have right. a positive mm -hmm. shine mm -hmm. or a star. Base. And it might be hard to find, but she right. finds it. And send us the best. Okay, so yeah, absolutely. The, best the good ones at home. And absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, so... And also, when um, you think about Miss Barrett's classroom and um, other activities she's involved in on campus, I'm sure the list is a lot of different things, endless. but yes. what kinds of things would you like to highlight that she's involved um, in? Miss Barrett does everything for me. She um, took over our, our, we recently came to Title I school. She runs my after-school program. 
she runs the history fair, she's the department chair. Um, whenever I have these crazy ideas in the middle of the night, I call <laughs> Tiffany, I'm like, what do you think about this? <laughs> and um, we make it happen, and she just makes it happen. Uh, sometimes people are like, you're always asking Miss Barrett. I'm like, I know, because she just gets me through this craziness that I think is going to be successful. Like, we have a literacy walk coming up this Friday. We did That's celebrations fun. around the world. It's just so many things that we highlight positive experiences for kids, and she's always been a partner there for me for that. And I think I, the list is endless of things. It's the strong curriculum pieces, our district liaison for social studies, a DPQ leader. Um, but that other piece that she does for kids as well, when I say we're making home visits, Tiffany's right there in the car with me putting kids and teachers in those cars and getting there. It's just, she's always like, what do you got? What can I do? Great. Um, she's a, a huge asset to Southern Oak. She's a cornerstone for us there. Absolutely. And I can feel that passion and <laughs> yeah. that same energy that you talk yeah. about just oh, across absolutely. the table. Mm -hmm. It's apparent. So. Thank you. And would there be anything else um, that you'd like to share, Tiffany, about your classroom or about things that are happening that you wanted to share? With um, us? I'm, I'm just so excited to be honored to, to represent my school and just to be chosen by my peers. Um, I never thought I'd be sitting here, but I, I've grown so much in these past seven years, just moving to Florida. And every year is, is a new year. You know, every year I'm changing, my lessons are changing. Um, so it's just, you know, and a new bunch of kids. So it's, mm -hmm. it's exciting. And I'm just very excited and, and honored to be here. It is exciting. Southern yes, Oaks, the yes. fact that you get to have an impact of 100 yeah. students too, probably by the time you look mm -hmm. at all of your blocks. Yeah. And, and that's seeing powerful. kids that have moved on to high school and just seeing them outside of school and, you know, how excited they get when they see me and how excited I get when I see them just really affirms that I'm doing the right thing. Really excellent. So, well, yeah. it's been a pleasure Thank to have you. both of Thank you here you. today. Thank you for Thank having you us. Very much. And we're for very excited. Yeah. Um, congratulations Thank you. again. <laughs> <laughs> and we look forward to watching the progress. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. We will be right back with another Teacher of the Year. Welcome back to the 2015 Teacher of the Year Studio Interviews. Now, from Southport Middle School, we have Maureen Dakin, our Teacher of the Year. Hi, Maureen. Hi, nice to meet you. And we also have Lydia Martin, her principal. Hey there. Hi, Lydia. Thank you both for joining us today. And we'd like to also congratulate you on your award. Thank you very much. And Maureen, go ahead and tell us about the grade and the subject that you teach at Southport. Um, this year I teach eighth grade literacy. I've been teaching eighth grade for about four years, um, but before that I taught sixth grade language arts for 10 years. And um, I've been at Southport, this is my 15th year. Uh, Fabulous. I, I love my school. <laughs> um, but it's, I love the subject area because I can do so much with it between writing and reading. There's so much um, content that you can incorporate into the area which I teach. Absolutely, and connecting with your other content on your team, I'm sure, too. Mm -hmm. Cross-curricular activities mm -hmm. um, and working with various grade levels as well. Great. Getting ideas and playing things off of each other. And, you know, I, with teaching from 6 to 8, there's such a good range of material that we can use for each grade. A lot of resources mm -hmm. then. Terrific. We're going to talk about some of those or we'll highlight those in a minute. And where did you attend school for college? I actually went to Eastern Connecticut State University. It's a um, sister school for UConn. And then when I moved to Florida, um, I attached on my education degree at FAU. Okay. And what was your first program of study? English literature. English literature. Okay. Yes. Terrific. And thinking about those resources that we were talking about, the wide spectrum of things available, when you think about technology, what types of, um, how do you infuse technology into your literacy routine? I use um, our CAV system every day. Um, I like to use the CAV a lot. You know, I was never a big fan of chalkboard when we have it. And um, the whiteboards I use Occasionally, I can see how it's better for math with the whiteboards, but I like the kids to see because it's more visual, um, and I can do a lot of activities with that where I can use PowerPoints or I can have the students incorporate making their own PowerPoints. I also use web quests. I make a lot of um, literary web quests where they can go in and they create their um, 
they can create their own timetable, so to speak. You know, I'll give them my timetable when I approximately would like everything due, but they can work at their own pace, and it helps with students who are at varying um, learning levels. And if they feel overwhelmed, they can ask me about it, but they can access these web quests from home or any computer in the school, so it makes it a lot easier on the students. That's terrific, and you can really differentiate then with your yes. different level of students. Like and I can also, like, I, usually I will attach emails to parents through Skyward so that I can put hyperlinks in there so the parents can click on the web quest and they can see what their students are doing as well. Awesome. That's great. And have you always known, um, well, you said your first, your first program at Connecticut and then you went into education. So um, when did you decide that you were more interested on the education path? I always knew I wanted to work with um, children in some capacity. I came from a family of teachers. My mom's um, a teacher at Floresta Elementary okay. and my aunt, uncle, grandfather, they were all teachers in Connecticut. Um, so I come from that environment and I think part of me, you know, I was set on that path and was told to be on that path and then kind of just went, well, I'm not going to go on that path then. But I always wanted to work with kids in some way and I originally wanted to go into some kind of um, sociology or psychology major and work with guidance. Mm -hmm. um, but then I realized I'm a little bit too uh, emotional and I would probably get too, too involved in those situations. I thought, you know, what a better way to still be able to counsel kids but and help guide them but through education. Absolutely, sure. And yeah, I heard you say you have multiple family members, so um, I'm sure they were your key inspiration. Were there other people that were inspiring you also in education or pretty much? Actually, I had some college roommates as well. When I was, we were finished with our first years of college and um, some of my friends that went back, because in Connecticut a master's degree is required, and some of my friends that were going back and working on their master's, they said to me, you know, you really would be a good teacher. It really would be something I could see you working with children. And I thought about it and I thought, you know what, let me, let me see how this is. And I took some education courses and I realized I really liked it. I really liked the idea of working with kids. And at that time, my mom had already um, moved to Florida and started teaching down here. She originally taught at Port St. Lucie Elementary. And so I went in there, and um, Mr. Hill used to let me come in to the first grade class, and I would work with the kids. And it kind of helped me decide, too, what grade level. I would be good at teaching where I would make the most connection. Great, great. And and did you um, spend some time in some middle grade classrooms too? Is that how? Yes. Okay. I, um, when I was at FAU and I had to do my um, interdisciplinary teaching as well, I went to Dan McCarty. And actually at that time, uh, the teacher I was with, I don't know if she teaches anymore because I've not I've lost contact with her. Um, her name was Sally Williams. And she was actually a teacher for Southern Oaks because Southern Oaks was still being built at the time. And it was probably 1997 or so. And I realized that that was the age Great. when I did my student teaching in there, that that was just, I knew at that time that's where I wanted to be. Terrific. And you said you've been 15 years now, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Fantastic. And we have lots of new teachers coming into our system. What advice would you share with a new teacher? I would be open-minded. You know, you learn a lot of stuff in school um, and curricula and content for your subject area, but there's always room to learn. And those first about three years, they shouldn't give up because there's always help out there from other teachers, but it's, it's, you're still learning. It's a lot of learning the first three years. If you can make it through those first couple of years, just like a business, you should be able to make it. Sure, Don't, sure. don't let things get you down right away. And it seems like every year, too, even when we're in our 15th or 16th year, there's still lots there's, of learning. I'm still learning now. <laughs> so we're still working with a mentor or a colleague that we can collaborate with. So absolutely. Great advice. <laughs> and Ms. Martin, when you visit in um, Maureen's classroom, what do you see? What do you hear happening? I always look forward to going into Maureen's classroom because I know that I'm going to see high-level thinking. Um, she has a real natural um, demeanor with the, with the class and um, she and that was something new I learned about her as far as her, her wanting to be a you know, guidance counselor. I can definitely see that. Um, she really builds um, great relationships with the kids and it's, it's a, an environment of mutual respect. Um, and because she has that relationship with the kids, she really is able to kind of demand a lot from the students. And um, she does a great job of kind of meeting them at their level that they're at. Um, you know, 
all of the classes have mixed ability students in them and um, she's able to really break down that those materials um, she had mentioned earlier about teaching literacy and where possible at Southport this year we've been able to com combine language arts and reading into basically a double block taught by the same teacher and um, this is something new that we've been doing this year and um, Maureen has really kind of taken that by the reins and um, she leads a, um, a the grade level teachers in her um, department um, as a collaborative facilitator so she's you know kind of facilitating the process of this collaborative planning um, and because they have such a great um, group of teachers and they're really working hard some of the the things that I'm seeing in there are just really high level um, critical thinking really integrating reading and writing um, you know using core novels um, you know anchor text to kind of um, use that as the baseline and then pull in um, nonfiction text and having the students you know compare and contrast those and making arguments and um, but picking things that are interesting to the students that's something that Maureen is really good at doing um, you know middle school kids they naturally don't necessarily want to be involved with reading and writing and and she does a great job of pulling in things that are going to be interesting to them so um, you know her her classroom environment is is organized um, it's, it's an active environment where the kids are actively learning and discussing things with one another and um, you know there's a, there's a lot of positive things that I see in her room it sounds fabulous absolutely <laughs> and with the integration this year into the new literacy the block that you were um, talking about is there anything you wanted to highlight that you like that's new as part of that integration of that class? I, I actually really enjoy the block. Um, some people thought it would be difficult, but I always found that I was rushing. You know, I've done six periods before when I first started at Southport, and we had seven periods. Um, it, it can be a little taxing on planning, but really when it comes down to it, it's a better environment for the kids. And if the kids want to discuss something, it really makes you be able to allow that time for the kids to express themselves and I think that's really important Absolutely. for them to stay engaged in the conversation be a part of something and own what they're learning Absolutely. so I think I think the block has done it well it's still a learning experience for us on how to guide the curriculum and which direction we're going but with this year being a blended year anyways it's I'm sure it's difficult everywhere where everybody's trying to get grasp what's going on. Absolutely. Yeah, and like you said, that discussion time, um, just having that extra time for kids to become more involved, that does help them own their learning to help them work and collaborate with other people and transfer that into practice. So that's terrific. Um, what other activities, Ms. Martin, do you see? I know we mentioned um, her leadership level for her department. Um, what other types of things do you see Maureen involved in on the campus at Southport? Um, she's involved in all of our, um, you know, parent nights. Um, we hold an annual literacy night where we um, provide activities for parents to do with their students. Um, she's involved with that. Um, you know, she. It, she's been at the school, like she said, 15 years, and, and she really has established herself kind of as a leader. Um, but she also is willing to learn from other people. And so she kind of models, you know, what a professional educator is. And um, she does that by leading her group, but also taking feedback and input from others. And, um, you know, she's just a real asset to, to have for new teachers coming in and veteran teachers. Absolutely, being willing, like you said, you're you're having those risks the kids can take in the classroom, and then you also do that so that people can feel comfortable and and have help from their peers. So it's definitely an asset. Absolutely. Would there be anything else you'd want to share with us, mistaken about your classroom that maybe we didn't mention as um, part of the interview yet? I can't say that we really missed anything. It's just that I honestly enjoy where I've been. Um, you know, Southport sometimes gets a bad rap being so far away or people forget <laughs> about it. And I have to say, in all the years that I've been there, I love that school. And one of the things that holds me in that school, because I've taught about, thought about going to higher levels or teaching high school, um, I don't have the patience to go downward. God bless those <laughs> teachers. Um, but the people I work with are such a phenomenal group of people. Um, it keeps me there. 
It really does. And we, we get a great group of kids. You know, they may have their struggles and they may have their certain situations that occur at home, but when it comes to, to the you know, the bigger picture, it's a great school. Absolutely. It's a great and that, environment. And all that spirit and feeling from the teachers, that definitely trickles down to how the kids feel in the classroom. So it's evident. Absolutely. Yeah. We'd like to thank both of you for being here thank today. Thank you for having us. And again, congratulations on your award. We'll oh, be watching the progress. We're excited about that. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. We will be right back with another Teacher of the Year. I hope you find a home. I hope you find a home. Hey, maybe you'll be Picnic. Maybe you'll be Picnic. We've been caged together too long. We've been caged together too long. How come nobody ever picks me? Maybe they're looking for somebody different. Pick me. Well, the shelter's closing up for another day. We didn't get picked. Welcome back to the 2015 Teacher of the Year Studio Interviews. Now, from St. Lucie Elementary, we're happy to have Angela Earhart. Hi. Hi, welcome, Angela. Thank you. And her principal, Mr. Michael Reed. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Reed. Pleasure to be here. And we're very excited to congratulate you on your award, Teacher of the Year Award. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Angela, go ahead and tell us the, um, the position that you hold and the levels of students that you work with at St. Lucie Elementary. I'm the math coach at St. Lucie Elementary and I work with grades K through 5. K through 5, excellent. Mm -hmm. And where did you attend school? UCF. Okay. And at UCF, what was your program of study? Elementary education. It was elementary. Yes, it was. Okay, fantastic. And what part, um, what is your favorite part of teaching? I absolutely love seeing the light bulbs click. When you're teaching a concept to a child and they're not getting it, you see them struggling, but the moment that they just have that, oh, I get it, it just like sometimes it just sends tears to you because you really hit that child right where you wanted them to be. Yeah. And just constantly building those relationships with the children and seeing that they have the potential to excel. And, and it's every child every day. And I just, that is the most amazing part of teaching, is just seeing that connection that they make to the concepts that you're trying to instill within them. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And now this is your second year as math coach, yes. right? And so what level did you teach prior to that position? Fourth grade. Fourth grade, yes. okay. So it's, it's neat too in your role that um, you're able to see those sparks go off in lots of different classrooms oh, now. Oh, absolutely. Um, so instead of just 25 or 24 kids, um, you're now probably seeing it on a, on a greater scale. Absolutely. And being in my second year, I see the light bulbs go off not only last year, but I see the, the connections the kids are making to this year, too. And when they go, oh, I remember that learning that last year, it's like, yes, you do. You know, we were working with it. So it is, it's, it's great seeing the connections and the light bulbs and, and, and throughout the grade levels and throughout the years, too. Fabulous. Yeah. Great. And also impacting being able to um, be a model for not only children, but also work and collaborate with peers. Absolutely. That's a fabulous yes. aspect of the role. Great. And what about um, for technology? How do you infuse technology into to your math coach uh, or math, um, is it math instructional specialist? Yes. Okay, um, into that role. Well, working with technology can be challenging, especially if your resources don't always, aren't always there for you, but we do do a very good job at connecting the lessons to online websites that will contribute to that, um, PowerPoint presentations with the students, and seeing the students interact with the technology as well, especially since we're going into this testing, um, computer testing error that we're going into. Um, we, we try really hard to incorporate that within our lessons when the, when the resources are there for us to Absolutely. do that with our students. Sure, yeah. that's terrific. And have you always known that you wanted to be a teacher? Yes, I have. It actually started in kindergarten. I was always the teacher's helper in kindergarten. And in first grade, what I would do is I would come home with my whatever little homework I had in first grade, and I would do it all by myself. And then I would teach all my stuffed animals in my classroom, my homework. And I knew I wanted to be a teacher so bad that I even asked my mom for a student desk. And I earned it. She, she bought like one of those old style student desks. The, the lid comes up and everything. And um, I had one of those and a little whiteboard in my, in my, I almost said my classroom, in my actual bedroom. And I would always do my homework and then teach my homework to my stuffed animals. And 
that's just, it's always been in me to be Very a teacher. Neat. Always, yeah. Terrific. And I can see that light. It's like a sparkle It is. When I, you talk about it's it. It's my passion. Absolutely. Definitely. <laughs> that's fantastic. And along that path, since you've known since you were so little, was there someone specific that inspired you to be a teacher? Um, I would think not one person in particular, but I do know that with all my teachers throughout elementary, middle, and high school, and my family, no one ever said no. They were always there to support me in whatever I wanted to become. Because when you're a little kid, you can do anything you want to do, you know? And when I was in high school, I was told, you can do anything you want to do. You can go any branch. You want to be a teacher? And I just, yes, I want to be a teacher. And no one ever said no. They always were supportive and said, that's what you want to do? Then go do it. And um, so I just thank all my teachers and and my parents and, and my family members and my friends just because they were always there to, to say, okay, you know, while my, while, while my other friends were going to be doctors and lawyers, it was, Angela wants to be a teacher and that's what she's going to do. And it was never, it was great. Mm -hmm. Everybody supported me. They so. believed in your choice. Yes. They believed in your path. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah. Very cool. And what advice would you give to a new teacher? My advice to a new teacher would be to go in to the classrooms before you actually get to be the teacher. Go in and observe the different elements of the classrooms and have down your classroom management plan. So, yeah, classroom yeah. management is a biggie for yes. sure. Yes. And do you find yourself being able to, in your role, um, help a lot, a lot with that? I'm sure. Yes. As far as yes, with the math coach position I'm in, there's different hats that I wear throughout the day and throughout the year. You know, sometimes. One teacher might need more coaching in some areas than just the mathematics component, and I'm there to support them in any of the areas of their pedagogy or anything they need help in and support in with their teaching practices. Right, which is a huge asset to that elementary ed background, being a math coach, because not only can you help with the content, but you can help with any aspect, like you right. said, of the room. So that's, yeah. that's, that's terrific. Now, Mr. Reed, when you visit in Angela's classroom, um, what types of things do you see and hear on your visitations? That's interesting because um, I don't get an opportunity to see her in a classroom. I see her in several classrooms because she does uh, modeling for us in various grade levels. So whether it's in a third grade class or a fifth grade class or a fourth grade class, uh, it's interesting to see how well she connects with, with, the, with the students. Um, regardless of the classroom and the grade level, she has the ability to connect with the students. She has the ability to um, ask the questions at their level and able to get them to stretch themselves and think and to work together um, as a group. Um, and that's quite difficult just coming into a situation and sometimes she comes into the situations cold. We've often, we've often asked her to, to go in and to help and to support the model for some of our newer teachers. And uh, when that happens, she kind of, uh, she plays a large role in helping teachers collaboratively plan. So she has the knowledge of what's going to go on and she has an idea of what's going to go on, but each classroom dynamic is different. And, uh, but she has the ability just to step in, make a connection with the students, and, and get them through the lesson and, and get them to learn at high levels. And that is a gift. That is hard to be able, just like you said, to walk into a cold situation and different dynamics, all different planning as far as routines and rituals. So that's definitely an asset, a great gift. And what other activities um, does Angela participate in on campus? I know. Um, you had mentioned some, you know, going into um, mentoring for new teachers and, and such. Yeah. Um, what other types of activities is she involved in at St. Lucie Elementary? Well, in addition to her role as math coach, I mean, and, and in that she does so many different things from, uh, like I said, modeling for teachers, uh, from sitting, uh, going with them side by side in classroom support. Um, also, she does a lot of working with our data. She shares our data. She runs our data meetings for our fifth grade, I mean, for our math students, uh, teachers, actually, for our math teachers. Um, but in addition to all that, she also coordinates our after-school Title I program. And in that, she does everything from uh, helping us as far as uh, the students who are identified to making sure they're in the programs, to doing the schedules, to the logistics of the program, uh, uh, getting the teachers hired. Um, it was it's just amazing just the amount of work that goes into a simple tutorial program mm -hmm. and Angela pretty much uh, does that you know on her own Absolutely. you know uh, in addition to her job as coach so it's definitely we tap into her she's a definite valuable resource and the the interesting thing about the about the, the dynamics uh, on our campus we have a lot of new teachers and we have a, a small cohort of veteran teachers and the veteran teachers um, recognize her as such a valuable resource and the new teachers recognize her as, as, as someone who can come in and offer a lot of support uh, for them in their in you know starting off their career in, in teaching. 
Absolutely. So you probably need two or three of Angela. <laughs> seven or eight. Yeah. Seven or eight. You know, we started this, this science cloning program. Oh, there you go. And, and so we just, we took our hands and we were just going to pop it on. Just. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> that's outstanding. Outstanding testimony. I'll tell your talent, mm, Angela. Thank you. And would there, would there be any other highlight um, about um, aha moments or just any part of how you spend your day that you'd want to share with us before we... Close for today. Um, well, I mentioned before when the students see the light bulb go off, and when we see the light bulb go off in the students, and how it's just it touches you at that. Just it can bring tears to your eyes sometimes. But um, this year, even um, working with working with teachers, seeing the aha and light bulb go off in teachers, and seeing them excited to go and teach that new content too, um, it just reminded me of a of, of something that happened this year where the teacher she came to me and she was. Like, can you explain this to me? And I did. And then it was like, oh, I can't wait to go teach this tomorrow. And then seeing the teachers in the hallway the next day and her saying, it was so great. I'm so glad that you were able to teach that to me. And so not only seeing the light bulb in the students, but being in the coach role now, seeing the light bulb in the teachers. And then they share that enthusiasm with their students. And then coming back to you and saying it was a success. Or sometimes they do come back to you and say, can I, can I help? Can, can you help me a little bit more? You know, and being able to touch the lives of students not only in one classroom, but in many, you know, and that's just, it's wonderful. It's, it's a blessing within itself. Absolutely. Definitely. Go home fulfilled each night, wake up every day ready for a start of a new <laughs> right. day. Sure. Right. Well, that's yeah. awesome. Well, it's been wonderful being able to um, have a light into the many classrooms that you touch, not just one classroom. So that's pretty exciting. Yes. And we, uh, again, congratulate you on your Teacher of the Year Award. Thank you very much. Thank we look you. forward to following the progress. Yes. Thank you. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank you for joining us. We will be right back with another Teacher of the Year. Read to a child today and spark a lifetime of ambition. Welcome back to the 2015 Teacher of the Year Studio Interviews. Now, from St. Lucie West K-8 School, we're happy to have Michelle Fryer Dommel. Thank you, Michelle, for joining us. Thank you. And we're also happy to have Susan Seal, her principal. Nice to see you as well, Susan. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. And uh, first and foremost, we just want to congratulate you on your award, Michelle. Oh, thank you very much. I'm Teacher of the Year for St. Lucie West K-8. Thank you. Let's have you um, start by telling us the grade and the subjects that you teach at St. Lucie West K-8. I teach fourth grade gifted students, um, so I teach reading, math, science, um, social studies, and the all-important writing for fourth grade. Awesome. And where did you attend school for college? Well, I um, actually went to a few colleges. I'm sort of a, a school nut, so I got my initial bachelor degrees from State University of Binghamton in New York okay. and I got a history degree there and a music degree and came out thinking I was going to be a music teacher. Didn't work out and ended up in the computer field for a whole bunch of years and then decided to go back to school and get my history certificate and so I went to DeSales University to get that and taught in Pennsylvania for a few years before coming down here. Great. Terrific. And what is your favorite part of teaching, Michelle? Um, I would have to say my favorite part of teaching has to be when you see that kid make the connection. You can see like the light bulbs popping over their heads and you just know that they have gotten something that they're going to remember. Um, I teach gifted students, so I teach a little bit differently than maybe a mainstream classroom. We do a lot of project-based learning and we do a lot of inquiry kind of instruction. And so when they figure it out, you know, they're so proud of themselves and it's just fun to watch them really make those connections, no matter what the subject is. Absolutely. That's why we're there every day. Right? Yeah, exactly. Phenomenal. Yeah. And then how do you, um, into your inquiry and your project-based um, learning, how do you integrate your technology into your routine for your gifted students? Well, 
technology is more on the student end. I encourage them to do any projects. Um, the, the goal of project-based learning is for the students to design their own projects. So I give them you know, an outline or a concept that I want them to master the learning, but then they plan the project, they decide what their outcome is, and they use whatever technology they feel appropriate to either do the research, put it together, or display the product in class. So about um, two months ago, we had a professional development in school where we learned how to use Prezi. And I got so excited about that. And I did my very first Prezi that day and showed my kids the next day. And that was a huge spark. And all the kids are now like, oh, I want to do a Prezi. I want to do a Prezi. So they're very into doing products that really showcase technology. Right. Um, so we've had kids come in using handheld devices um, to do research on things that they've saved and they're able to put that into whatever product that they're making. Great, and so not only are you modeling when you teach in your technology, but all of those sharing of projects are yes. like you have a volume of other models of things Absolutely. for yep. kids to share. Mm -hmm. That's terrific. Yeah. And when you think about um, your path as a teacher, um, have you always wanted to, did you always feel like you wanted to be um, in, in teaching? I know you said you were in technology, so it, it is probably <laughs> at that time when you discovered, I guess, tell us about that. Well, it's kind of interesting because my mom will laugh about this, but I grew up wanting to be a brain surgeon. <laughs> okay. So you know, that was my goal, to be a brain surgeon. I didn't know the term was neurosurgeon at the time. but. When I got older, I actually went to school for pre-med and then fell into music, loved it. Um, and I liked history too, so I just ended up majoring in that. And when I came out of school, I mentioned I couldn't get a job as a teacher in during teaching music. So I sort of fell into computers and landed there for a few years. But all the time I was thinking about teaching, thinking about teaching. And when my daughter was born, my husband said, this is the time. You need to do this. You need to go back to school and get your certificate. And so I did. And best decision I ever made. Absolutely. And when you think about um, in your classroom role, you're able to infuse music as well mm -hmm. in probably a lot of outlets as you study and kids are involved in projects. You're able yeah. to do that in elementary as well. I so. sing at them and mm -hmm. they think that's kind of funny. <laughs> But we, you know, mm -hmm. especially like for social studies, we might have you know, like folk songs or mm -hmm. if I know songs, we just did a, a, a whole book study about the Great Chicago Fire. And so I started singing to them about, you know, Mrs. O'Leary and her cow. And so we learned that song. <laughs> it's just kind of fun. A lot of historical reference Absolutely. with music, too. Yeah, it's fun. Sure. And is there someone along that way who inspired you to become a teacher? Or do you have an inspirational teacher that... Yes. Actually, I have two, um, both of which were high school teachers. Um, my music teacher was Mrs. Basil. Um, she was phenomenal, infused in several of us the love for teaching and the love for music. In my graduating class out of the, the group of us that were together in the music, um, both in choirs and stage shows and all that kind of stuff. There's about six of us that are teachers. Mm -hmm. So I am sure that she had a great deal to do with inspiring us. The other person was Mr. Doris, who was my high school physics teacher. And he was big <laughs> and scary, and I thought he hated me. And then he started laughing at my jokes, and I discovered a love for science that I had no idea that I had. So the two of them, I would say, definitely inspired me okay. to be a teacher. Two great stories. Yeah. And what advice with um, so many new teachers in our field today, what advice would you offer to a new teacher or a new group of teachers? Um, I think the best advice that I can give a new teacher is probably ask for help. Make sure that you, you know, understand what uh, veteran teachers can offer you. Um, so many new teachers I see try to just muddle through and reinventing the wheel when they really don't have to. There's so many of us that have been around for so many years that um, have so many great tools in the toolbox, and it would be really beneficial for them to just, you know, brainstorm with all of these teachers on a team or in a group and 
really pull out those ideas that they think might work for them. Try them out, modify them, and see what works and what doesn't work for them. And people are always willing to help Absolutely. and collaborate. Mm -hmm. That's what makes us all real strong. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. And um, Ms. Seal, when you go into Michelle's room, what do you see and what do you hear in her classroom? You hear the joy of seeing students and hearing them as they're learning. Um, Mrs. Fryer Dommel has the innate ability to capture the essence of what children are interested in and build on that. So it's a very exciting place to visit her classroom because not all the same kids are doing the same thing at the same time. They are learning in different ways at different rates of time and it's always an engaging classroom to visit. It's always one of my favorites. Terrific and I can tell all the things and stories that she was sharing with us and all the ways that they're able to build on their own strengths and then be able to have a product focus that's reflective of mm -hmm. their learning style or how they would like to be able to celebrate that. That's terrific. And then when you think about other activities um, for Mrs. Fryer Dommel, what other activities um, do you see that she participates in around campus? She's extremely active. She chairs the BLPT, she's an active member of PTO, she's an active member of SAC. Um, I have to encourage her not to become involved <laughs> in things because it, she tends to be involved in everything. But I've really enjoyed having her as the chair of the BLPT because we've tried to take the focus of that and move it to a think tank solution. We have some great minds that come to that meeting and we've really found it and begin to find ways that we can take some of the true problems that we're wrestling with as a school and take them through some protocols and find out what's going to work best. Take it back to the peers, try it out, find out if that's a viable solution and then return to follow up the next month. So I have to say I enjoy that most of all and that's where I really see her shine because she truly is an out-of-the-box thinker. A lot of times we'll end meetings whether it's SAC, whether it's PTO, and she'll come back the next day and say, you know what, I was thinking about this afterwards and I thought that maybe we might want to. So I really enjoy that because as a principal, it's really great to have team members that can think outside of the box and help you solve problems. We know we face so many daunting problems on a daily basis, we can't do it alone. It takes a team. And, and even sitting on some of those things overnight and coming back the next day, it's kind of like coming back with solutions and you know really being able to problem solve together. True. It's terrific. And what about um, your experience on some of those um, teams that Mrs. Seal mentioned? Do you have a highlight that you'd like to share about being a part of? Well, I think that the, the BLPT is something that I am proud of. Um, we have worked really hard on changing um, how it works and really not so much the structure of it but what the focus is and I really enjoy having other teachers coming in with ideas and we really need to work on how we can improve you know how we do X Y and Z and being able to come up with an idea together to do that and it's a platform that has a little bit different shift than the traditional BLPT I think in many of the other schools mm -hmm. and I think that Susan and I have worked really well together in really changing the way the BLPT works and what we can do with it. And I'm sure the examples that you've shared really do lay that foundation of building quite a different type of culture mm -hmm. among a faculty when it is organized in that in that fashion so you see that strength yeah, come definitely. through. Yeah, just to piggyback on that a little bit, um, the BLPT was designed to focus on curriculum and instruction. And we've done that in several different ways. And we heard voices of teachers talking about some frustrations through our, about RTI. So we brought that to the table. What resources do we have? Where do the, what are the areas that we see we need to focus on? And we were able to also have a survey that we gave to the teachers and then come back with some of that information. So that's just one example. There's another thing that we're looking at now in our curriculum. We currently use reading counts. And at this point in time, we have a one-size-fits-all policy. And we're kind of saying that maybe that doesn't meet students' needs best. So that's something we're bringing to the table again to talk about what's working really well in that program and then what are the parts that aren't and how can we tweak it. We want to make sure we don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, but look constantly to improve what we're doing. 
Exactly. Absolutely. So as we are giving some advice to new teachers, it's for us too. We're always growing. Mm -hmm. You know, we're always learning to collaborate more. Yeah. And I'm sure the buy-in um, of a faculty when you're doing that approach is, is far, really high, I would just imagine. Um, I sent out a survey right before Christmas break and there were, actually was a person who responded that way that they were really pleased with seeing the change just from reading the BLPT notes and noticing how much was going on and they were really excited next year to join in on some of the committees we have in place. So that again is a testament to how hard we've worked and tried to focus that. Right, a big affirmation yes. yeah, for the change. Very good. Excellent. Is there anything else you'd like to share with us um, just about your day or your routine or your Teacher of the Year honor before we close our session for today? I just do want to say that it's a tremendous honor and privilege to be chosen as Teacher of the Year. Um, I was surprised and flattered that people would think of me as somebody that could be a model teacher. And that means a lot to me that my peers, you know, thought of me in that way. So it's a, it's a very important honor to me that Absolutely. my peers chose me for this. And, a, and an asset that um, I know Mrs. Seal and everyone would concur that St. Lucie West K-8 also has you to be able to share that learning experience with them. So. Thank you. Absolutely. And we're thrilled to have you both here today. We look forward to the progress of Teacher of the Year and following that. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. We will be right back with another Teacher of the Year. I understand you need a little help with your mortgage. Want to avoid foreclosure. Candy? Um, well, you know, you're in luck. We're uh, experts in this sort of thing. Mortgage, rigmarole, whatnot. Why don't we get a contract? Who wants a contract? Uh, I don't... Here you go, Pete. Thanks, Betty. Brought a toner. If you're facing foreclosure, talk to the right people. Speak with HUD-approved housing counselors free of charge at 888-995-HOPE. Welcome back to the 2015 Teacher of the Year Studio Interviews. Now, from Palm Point Educational Research School, we have Jade Allison Joy. Welcome, Jade. Thank you. And we also have Jade's principal, Deborah Snyder. Welcome, Debbie. Hi. Hi. We're excited to have you both here, and we'd like to congratulate you on your award of Teacher of the thank Year. Thank you so much. And thank you for joining us. And at that, we'll have you tell us about the grade level that you sure. teach at Palm Point. I teach fifth grade at Palm Point. Okay. I've been there since we opened our doors in 2008. I've done fifth grade most of the time and one year in fourth grade. Okay, fabulous. And tell us about your school for college, where you went to school, and what was your program of study? Sure. I actually did my undergrad in business at Hofstra University in New York, and then I went back for my master's. Uh, to be a teacher in childhood education at Long Island University. Okay. Fabulous. And what is your favorite part of teaching? Getting to see my kids every day. I love them. They love me. We have a wonderful relationship where it's like we're a big family and it's like I'm just going not to work but just to hang out with my friends. That makes sense. Yeah, that's great. It's you must really work hard on building that rapport and trust, and so you've built that, and you have a community, a great community that you love Absolutely. to go to every day. I want them to be happy, and they know that together we're both happy, and we have a great day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and there's well. nothing better to wake up for than to go into school with that exactly. And thinking about, um, I know Palm Point has a lot of different technology. Um, share with us how you infuse technology into your daily routine. Oh, sure. One of the reasons why I was so excited when Palm Point opened was I knew there would be a plethora of technology there. So, I mean, we have state-of-the-art technology between the calves, every internet program for the kids that we could think of. Actually, last year won a reflex grant for my classroom, which was um, a multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction fluency. So I was a test trial of it and gave the kids such a love for learning math, they couldn't wait to get on it. Oh, and that's exciting. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit more about, sure, about that absolutely. example? Sure. Um, it's like they get leveled off for their multiplication so that everyone starts, you know, at the beginning and then they work towards their fluency and then they get little awards according to how good they're doing and nobody ever does real bad. They're always doing good and they always are striving to get to that next level the next level. Great. There's games, but they just love going on it. That's great. Mm -hmm. So they're super engaged when it comes to learning Very their so. facts there. Yes. <laughs> That's terrific. And when you're thinking about, I know that you said you went to school for business yes. first, is that right? Yes. So um, 
what what about what was the timing and knowing that you wanted to be a teacher? How did that? Yeah, sure. I, I always wanted to be a teacher. Oh, okay. But I, I, something said to me, let's try the business field first. I wanted, you know, I worked in New York. I wanted to work on Wall Street and have that whole vision, but something was always missing. And when 9-11 uh, happened, I worked a few blocks away from there, and it was an eye-opener for me. Mm -hmm. And I got to sit down and look at, you know, my life and said, you know, I need to go back to school to be a teacher because that's what I was meant to do. That's where your heart was, for Absolutely. sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. And along that pathway, um, was there someone either early or maybe even later when you did your reflection that inspired you to be a teacher? Absolutely. My uh, second grade teacher always had a special place in my heart. And when I went back to school, I did my master's in a year and a half. I went real quick. And I had the opportunity to actually student teach with her. And it was her last year before she retired. So it was the best experience. She prepared me. I saw the relationship she had with her children, you know, her students. And I said, you know, this it couldn't have been any better. Absolutely. And a special connection for you, too, to be able to have that oh, awesome. person who built you up so wonderfully in second grade to be able to mm -hmm. then kind of culminate her year. Oh, I'm definitely. sure it was just a special she for her. She loved it. I loved it. It was the best experience. Oh, that's <laughs> terrific. And if you think about all the new teachers coming into the field, um, what, what advice would you want to share with new teachers? I would definitely tell them to never give up because it can be stressful at times, of course, but you're, you know where you're in it for. You're in it for the kids and you have to you know, make them happy. And if you show them that you love them and you, know, you have that great relationship, they'll work as hard as they can for you. I've seen it, I see it daily. Mm -hmm. you, know, you have that relationship where they can talk to you you know, you're not their buddy where we're going to hang out, but you have that relationship where, you know, it's strong and they respect you, I respect them, and you have a win-win situation. Mm -hmm. And they feel they can take risks with you and they totally. trust you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's so important. Great advice for new teachers. Yeah. And Ms. Snyder, when you think about going into Jade's classroom and what you see and what you hear, um, go ahead and paint that picture for us. I see a teacher using best practice strategies, teaching children using, if they don't get it one way, it's like, let me try another way. I mean, she continuously um, works to make her practice better for all kids. I see technology being used. I always see a smile. I've never seen Jade. Um, look like she's stressed or looked like she's having a bad day. She walks into that classroom and she knows that she is the model for those children. I see children, um, huge smiles, always welcoming. Um, Ms. Snyder, thank you for visiting. Ms. Snyder, they want to share. They're so proud. Um, I sometimes feel feel awful when I walk into Jade's classroom because I interrupt because they want to stop and tell me what they're doing and what they're working on and Ms. Snyder sit down here look at this and those types of things. I see kids using manipulatives in math, I see kids with technology and I think something that Ms. Joy said that definitely is reflected in her classroom is everybody's happy. They are a family and they work together. It is not about one child being successful. They help each other. I've, I, I mean, I've seen kids not find a pencil when another child without even being asked said, here, you can use this one. And the relationships that she has with children is amazing, but the relationship that the kids have for each other, you don't always see that in a classroom. And they are a family, and it's about every child every day in that classroom. And when you were talking about what it looked like and how you felt that when you went in, I, I felt that exactly too, because that's a gift, because as you said, you don't always find um, that communication, that level of respect. One's looking out for each other no matter so, what. And so that's apparent in what your goal was set out to do, to become exactly. that family, to lay that groundwork. Now in almost January to February, you see, you see all of that um, paying off and you mm -hmm. see that, that work in place, in action. And 
Jade has, um, this is Jade's second year with the same group of children. Um, when I think about Jade, I also think of her being a team player, meaning not just what the grade level needs, but what the school needs. And a couple years ago, we were um, having quite a bit of transition in fourth grade. So I asked Jade to teach fourth grade for a year. And she loved her team of teachers. And it was a decision. I wanted her buy-in. And I said, you know, this is what we need for the school. And she said, if this is what we need for Palm Point, I will do that, mm -hmm. this. So she moved to fourth grade. Well, then last year, she said, I love fourth grade. I love this team, but this group of kids are really, really special. Would you consider looping me to fifth? And if you want me to go back to fourth next year, I will do that and do it again. So she's been with these kids now for a year and a half. Wow. And she cries when they cry. <laughs> she laughs when they laugh. Um, she knows these children, their likes and their dislikes. and. Um, I just can't even imagine fifth grade graduation day. <laughs> um, that's the relationship she has with those children. Absolutely. And, and just being able to, um, I'm sure it's reciprocal. Not only have you impacted oh. their lives and their families' lives, but just to be able to have that relationship as a teacher for a multiple grade or a multiple year is, is fantastic. Yeah, one of the proudest moments was when I told them I was going to be their teacher next year. And like, they were nine and ten, and like a few of them were crying because they were so happy, and it just made me cry, and it was <laughs> awesome. <laughs> that is awesome. That is awesome. And also an asset. As Ms. Snyder said, that you would, a team, when you teach with a team for a long time, that's like another set of your family, mm -hmm. another type Absolutely. of family. So to go, and now you have two teams, probably, <laughs> right? Fourth right, and fifth. Right, exactly. You know, so that's, that's a beauty, too. Win <laughs> win. Um, when you think about the um, activities that Miss Joy is in outside of her classroom on mm -hmm. campus, mm -hmm. um, which, which ones of those would you want to highlight for us, Ms. Snyder? Um, Jade is the team leader this year. And she has been a team leader in the past. And I think the role of the team leader has changed very much. Um, a role of a team leader used to be coming to meetings with the administration and taking information back to your team. Um, we now do collaborative planning. Um, Jade has to take six other um, teachers and collaboratively come up with a best design for students. And she does that role really well. We couldn't be more pleased with our team leaders and how hard they're working at collaboration because it's not as easy as it sounds. Um, so that is something that Jane does and does well. She's also um, been very involved in grant writing. Um, I'm not sure the exact amount of money that she has um, written grants for, but she has certainly done several, and she's excellent because she gets the grants that she writes. Um, you also got to travel with some of the oh, yes. grants that you um, mm -hmm. that you wrote, so she is definitely a grant writer. Um, we're also real excited that we're starting a um, drama program and Jade is going to work with the children and this is going to be a, a before school completely volunteer. Um, there's no compensation of working with children for a drama production at Palm Point. Um, she's been in the Martin Luther King Parade <laughs> many, right. many times. Um, Jade is just one of those teachers that she doesn't say no. Um, she goes above and beyond, um, not only to her children, but to the entire school. She, she is very involved and truly an asset at Palm Point. Thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> Lots of lucky students and Absolutely. teachers to be able to work with you every day. Absolutely. Thank you. Now, would there um, be anything else? I know that you had mentioned um, a couple of things that you were involved in that you'd want to share 
um, highlights of before we would close Sure. Um, with the grant writing, I had the opportunity to go to Virginia twice. I went to Virginia for, to study the U.S. Constitution. Then I was asked back to go to Philadelphia to study again. And that was an awesome experience. And then my probably proudest achievement was um, Honeywell Space Camp. They choose um, 250 teachers nationwide, and they get thousands of applicants. And it was just an amazing experience. I got to do like uh, astronaut space camp. And when I tell, oh my God, it was awesome. <laughs> when was that? That's that was uh, two summers ago. Wow, congratulations. Like, thank you. So that was awesome. I met ex teachers from everywhere. And it was, I was still keep in touch with them. And we bounced back ideas back and forth. And when I tell my students about that, I show them pictures and they're just in awe. They're like, I want to be a scientist. I want to be an astronaut, you know? So it opens their eyes to the field. Absolutely. So. Wow. Congratulations. That's phenomenal. Thank you. <laughs> Very nice. Um, Ms. Snyder, anything you'd like to say in closing? I just know um, I'm very proud of Palm Point teachers and each year when we represent, when we choose somebody, they're representing a, a great staff and Jade is so deserving. She is a principal's dream employee. Um, and again, it's not just about the students or about the adults. It's about the entire um, organization. Um, her parents love her. Um, she will go above and beyond to meet the needs of all children. Um, I think about one little boy that Jade's had for two years now, and um, he could be a challenge and from day one Jade loved this child <laughs> and loves this child and turned behavior around quickly um, because he wants to please her and he wants to do his very best so we are extremely pl proud of Miss Joy and we Wish her the very best as Absolutely. she continues this endeavor. And it's been a delight for me to um, sit and actually get some more in involved in your classroom. Thank so you. It's been, it's a, pleasure. been a pleasure. Thank you both for joining us today. We look forward to following the progress of Teacher of the Year. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for joining us. We will be right back with another Teacher of the Year. Read to a child today and spark a lifetime of ambition. Welcome back to the 2015 Teacher of the Year Studio Interviews. Now, from Westgate K-8, we're happy to have Kimberly Rapoon with us. Hi. Hi, Kimberly. Hi. Congratulations on your award. Thank you very much. Happy to have it. you. Thank you. And also, we're happy to have Robert Cramer, the principal of Westgate K8. Thank you for also joining us. For Thank you for us. having us. We okay. appreciate it. We appreciate it. We're very excited. Yes. Excited for you to tell us about yourself, your grade yes. level that you teach. Thanks. Um, well, I actually teach eighth grade language arts. And so I was absolutely stoked to be able to take on that position. And it's just opened up so many challenges. And um, you really, it's a tested year. So it, it it's a very data driven, statistical oriented. Um, year that just makes my life exciting and fun. Awesome. And is this the first, this is your first year then in the eighth grade language arts position? No, third year. Position, third year. Yeah. Okay. And so it's been a lot of, and so this is kind of, as we go um, forward, you know, we've been in A school, we dropped into a B school. And so now we're kind of in that, get our title back. And so we're <laughs> definitely, you know, pumping up the rigor and it's just, it's really exciting for yeah. our team and our staff and Excellent. Cruising to move forward? Yes, totally. Yeah. Absolutely. Awesome. Wholeheartedly. And where did you attend school and what was your program of study in college? college actually, um, I started off in San Diego. So, um, starting off at California State University of San Marcos. Okay. Um, starting off with liberal arts and then moving into criminal law, um, which brought me into Florida. And then I was able to finish with a criminal justice degree, 
with a minor in elementary education, history, and Spanish. Wow. So, yeah, yeah. a lot of variety. Definitely, definitely. A definitely great list of skills. Yeah, well, Super. and it's just, it's, it's opened up so many doors. Excellent. Obviously. Awesome, and what is your favorite part of teaching? <sighs> the challenge and the aha moments and the, um, just the everyday challenge, in my opinion, and seeing the growth and development of the children. Uh, whether it's something, you know, little that makes such a big difference in their life or something just so enormous that they, they finally get and you get to hear years later, hey, that, that, that helped me out and, you know, it, it meant the world to me. And the letters from parents or see, bumping them into the supermarket and just it, the challenge and it really... All the rewards that come with... Well, not just rewards because challenges, I don't know if that's rewarding, yeah. but it's, you know, the effort that you put into it. And then you get to see that kind of bounce back. Mm -hmm. If not, you work on right. fixing. Yeah. Right. Getting so, to that spark. Right. Making it So happen. it's a personal challenge, but it's also mm -hmm. the challenge that the kids get to have. And so it's never, never a dull moment. Excellent. Awesome. Yeah. And how do you, I know at Westgate you have a lot of technology, how do yeah. you infuse technology into your classroom routine? Um, I actually, I love technology for the fact that it's so adaptive and um, with modifications and things like that that help like any type of learner. Um, as well, obviously as myself, I know that I utilize technology to the best of my ability always. Um, but it's always such an ever-changing field that we're in right now and just in regards to life, everything's so tech savvy right. um, that you, you have to incorporate that in because that's going to be their real world as they go forward. So adding, you know, programs or using technology, just even, you know, quick Excel spreadsheets for data and the kids just get that, and I hate to say it, but instant gratification, but they get the instant knowledge of knowing where they're at, where they need to be setting goals. So you get to do more because we get that instant gratification. So if we're collecting data on essays or sentence fluency or focus, we know instantly, and then we can compile that data and make a goal, and then instantly work on fixing that. So it's, I hate to say it, I mean, I know that we're all impatient, but <laughs> we're so, but what we, with that, we get to work on things faster to where sure they get to have so much more growth and development throughout the year. Mm -hmm. yeah, and so. your, your time span that you have with them yes. can be maximized that much as, more. As best as possible. Exactly. Yeah. Terrific. And have you always known that you wanted to be a teacher? I think I've always known that I wanted to help. Okay. And then teaching kind of came from just other doors and avenues opening. Um, earlier in life I definitely wanted to be a teacher or a doctor. And I think that science, no offense to any of my science teachers, kind of pushed me off to where um, I wanted just definitely to become a helper, more so in the fact that working with somebody to expand their horizons as well, because you get that, you know, warm fuzzy. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I can feel that. I can feel that energy, <laughs> that vibe. Thank you. And you, I know that you roll that out when your kids come in every day. <laughs> every day. Definitely feel every that. day. You, you make the weather in your yeah. classroom. Absolutely. And what, what advice, we have lots of new teachers coming into the field, what advice would you offer to a new teacher coming in? <sighs> Breathe. <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> Breathe. Um, and to definitely stick with it. I mean, if you're passionate about it, don't give up. I know that it can be a hard teacher and just keep keep with your support circle. I have been, you know, astronomically blessed to have such a great support circle throughout my life, but especially in my position. You know, my staff, my mentors, um, my all my colleagues, to be honest with you. Um, and use your voice, ask. If you don't know where or what something is, ask because if you're if you're questioning it, and so stick with it because it's one of those end end results that you're gonna you're going to definitely make a huge impact in the lives of so many. Yeah. So don't give up. Right. And definitely. we're fortunate to be able to have that profession and that role where yes. we can wake up and do that every day. How you get, I mean, exactly. it's amazing. Yeah. It's absolutely amazing. Awesome. Very cool. Now, Mr. Cramner, when we think about um, you going in and looking into Kimberly's room and visiting, what do you see? What do you hear that you'd like to share about our classroom? Well, first of all, it's the energy level. I mean, the energy level that you have in Kim's classroom is the same energy level we have here at this table. There is always lots of learning, lots of 
activities, lots of focus, lots of goal discussion going on in the classroom so that, so that the kids understand what they're doing, why, why they're doing it, how it all connects. But she also puts it in frameworks that the kids can buy into. She gets that engagement level up by keeping the assignments, by, by keeping the projects into areas that the kids then can easily buy into and, and move forward with. Certainly, some of the stuff they do is, is very challenging because you're looking at eighth grade language mm -hmm. arts writing, so you're looking at a, um, expository and persuasive writing. Some of those topics and some of the things that they have to do to prep the kids for writing and the kids have to learn to prep themselves to be better writers, those are very, very challenging. But also, she mixes when she can and with fun. They do a lot of relationship building within the classroom and as an eighth grade so that the students really feel that they know their teacher and the teacher knows them. So it's, it's a very positive and dynamic uh, atmosphere when you get into the classroom. Sounds really exciting. I can feel the energy too, so I, I feel like I'm there. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Awesome. And um, what other activities do you um, see Kimberly participating in on campus other than um, the language arts classroom per se? She is the head of our National Junior Honor Society, mm -hmm. and she, through them, she's, she's engineered some just phenomenal uh, food drives for our families. Um, we have a number of families at Westgate who are, in this time, very challenged to find enough food, and at Thanksgiving and at Christmas, I don't know how she did it, but she, she just mm -hmm. got huge participation, and she also got our kids for in the National Junior Honor Society involved with some community based people to extend out and get into other families that weren't Westgate related but helped with food drives that went out to other families as well. Um, so it's it's that's one area. She's a leadership person in our school in terms of our language arts department and moving forward in the curriculum. She uh, is also a, a strong supporter of all of our PBS activities and school activities, dances, uh, uh, after school activities, PTO activities. You, you're always going to see Kim there. Absolutely. She's <laughs> highly asset. involved. Uh, oh, yes, Thank absolutely. You. Absolutely. Oh, okay. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. And I know that um, you, with, your, with your background, you have a lot of um, different experiences that you were sharing with it's me eclectic. before. <laughs> yeah, that you, you bring into the classroom. Yeah. Is, there, is there anything else that you'd like to tell us about how that connects to what you're doing currently? Um, I think just the real world understanding. And I think, you know, the relationship building is so strong. And, and being that real person, they know that as just a human being that that you know things are the way they are for a reason and that you just make the best of everything and go forward and you see that how you know as we push our children and our students um, forward that they can be you know the best that they can be mm. and to just keep plunging forward and it's just it's amazing what these kids do it's amazing to see you know the smiles on their face but it's also amazing to see like the challenging looks what, you know, when, when, when they're, you know, perplexed or deep in thought, where, where you know that that, you know, question that you asked was such, like a higher rigor where they, mm -hmm. well, they'll say, you know, hmm, and they, they get back and think, and then, then you you know, as a teacher, you're kind of like, yeah, you know, all right, and then how can I make that better, and how can I deepen that knowledge, and it's just, you know, it's the stuff that, that we've done, and then you build upon it because it needs to be built upon in this new era, and it's... And sometimes the things that we struggle with the most, we learn the most when we, yes, when yeah, we do and, that. So you yes. can see that happening because yeah. you've set that right. um, environment. And the standard, culture. I guess, just the culture and the standard, like going off of that, yes, the culture and the standard, not only like Westgate, but I, I would say within St. Lucie County and in teaching just in general, my class as well, you set that high standard and then go beyond that. Mm -hmm. And I guess just because that's that expectation and that's where my training has come from. Sure. And so it's just... Yeah, it's been it's awesome. paved the way for an yeah. awesome, awesome Absolutely. adventure and great asset to yeah. all the kids that you've been able to serve for the past Absolutely. three years. Absolutely, for yep. I could Absolutely, yeah. heading north and cruising ahead to set that goal that yes. you set for the writing for this yeah. year. And so. it's just it is yeah, definitely back to an A, back to an A, and it's just been it's been exciting, but it's been a challenge for us as a team to get together through like collaborative, facilitated training and stuff like that where you kind of look at that big picture and how are we going to get there, what are our steps, and then going back forward, 
or back, sorry, backwards, and looking at it, you know, month by month, week by week, meeting up with administration, and just kind of being in that checks and balance mm -hmm. of as an educator, what I'm doing, where, you know, how can I strengthen it? When we collaborate our lessons, how can we do better? How can we push them forward? Does anyone have any ideas? And it's just been, that's been absolutely, as we, as we work across the boundaries of the, you know, middle school, and then even elementary, going across the arts in regards to art, um, science, math, et cetera, and incorporating everything in has actually been just so eye-opening because everyone gets those aha moments. Mm -hmm. And then it helps, obviously, the student as well. Yeah, absolutely. And, I mean, I feel selfish in saying that I was, I was so help, you know, molded together in regards to that. And I, I felt more ready for, you know, as I approach into my day. But then looking at the, you know, the data and everything that we've collected and speaking to the students thus far, you know, they found it helpful. Absolutely. And they think that, it, you know, they've, they've mentioned how it's easier in other classes and other arenas mm -hmm. that they've done. I mean, even things that we, you know, from PE to art to language arts, and it all intertwines and connects. And it just makes that whole team approach yes. more cohesive. And it's just, but it's our, I mean, and I guess it's one of the blessings of working in a K-8 school. So. Absolutely. Because you have that whole vertical yes. piece. It's a lot of juggling, and then eighth grade, they have to graduate. Right. I, I know. <laughs> I'm sure it is sad. No, well. Yeah. It's a good, it's a good sad. Yeah. It's like I mean, you're, you you're proud them. of them. You've seen them come Well, so you see far. them come back from high school, and they're like, oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. How's high school? Oh. It's crazy. <laughs> and they know you prepared them so well I for writing. Too. Yeah. Absolutely. So best. And again, starting at kindergarten and all the way up. Yeah. So. Great, great. It's been and um, Mr. Uh, Kramer, would there be anything else that you'd want to share with us? I know we're before we wrap up today in closing. Um, yeah, I think I do. Uh, the one other thing that I want to share about this that you will not notice in this interview in any way, shape, or form is Mrs. Rapoon also fights some terrific visual challenges. And what is so neat that is not part of the curriculum is she is a living example to her students that it's not what you limitations that you bring to the table it's what the abilities that you bring to the table so not only does she get that across in, in her delivery in the classroom but she's a living example of it and so her students see that she's not going to limit herself so why should I limit myself right. and I think that's important for kids to see growing up they need to see people who say, okay, I got some challenges, but that's not what I'm about. That's what, not why I'm here. I'm here because I want to take you and I want to show you how to take another step forward. Yeah. And that's what I think is so great about Kim. Making an impact on so yeah. many more broad ranges of students. Right. Yeah. And we've talked about you know, persevering through anything, that you can do anything. So yeah. I always joke around and say, see, say, boy, this, you can do it. It can be done. And the kids just, just love it. They say, I can't. Ah. You can. Let's yeah. let's find a way. Yeah, absolutely. Let's find a way. Absolutely. Well, I feel like great things are are going to be in store for Gorgeous. the next part of the year, and we're thrilled that you were able to join us again. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Congratulations thank you. on your honor. Oh, it's very so nice to meet pleasure. you. And always nice to see you. Always again, nice Mr. to see you, Miss Page. Gorgeous. And um, we look forward to the progress following that for Teacher of the Year. Well, thank you very much. Thank I appreciate you. it. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. We will be right back with another Teacher of the Year. I understand you need a little help with your mortgage. Want to avoid foreclosure. Candy? Um, well, you know, you're in luck. We're uh, experts in this sort of thing. Mortgage, rigmarole, whatnot. Why don't we get a contract? Who wants a contract? Uh, Here you go, Pete. Thanks, Betty. Brad a toner. If you're facing foreclosure, talk to the right people. Speak with HUD-approved housing counselors free of charge at 888-995-HOPE. Welcome back to the 2015 Teacher of the Year Studio Interviews. Now, from Village Green Environmental Studies School, we're happy to have Dee Dee Bradley, our Teacher of the Year from there. Welcome, Dee Dee. Thank you. And we're also excited to have her principal, Aretha Vernette. Thank you, Mrs. Vernette, for joining us. Thank you for having us. And we'd like to also um, congratulate you on your honor and your award. Oh, thank you. I'm we're very, very honored. We're very excited to be able to share light into um, the special things that you do at Village Green. 
And with that, Dee Dee, go ahead and tell us about the grade and the subjects that you teach with that grade. Well, I teach kindergarten, and it's everything all day. Uh, it's, a, it's a challenge to get uh, uh, things to do because uh, kindergarten we change quickly out throughout the day. Uh, lots to do every day. So um, try to, uh, with my team, we try to incorporate a lot of the uh, social studies, science, reading, writing, uh, math, and everything that we can do. So if there's some place that we can plug in a little uh, lesson on, uh, with math and science or math and social studies, we try to try to do all that together so that we don't completely run out of time because there's so much to do in kindergarten. There is so much, absolutely. And where did you attend school, Dee Dee, for college? Um, well, I graduated from Georgia Southern College in Statesboro, Georgia, and um, I really loved it there. Okay. Uh, really nice. Uh, I came back to Florida, uh, to Martin County. I grew up in Martin County, went to the schools and graduated from Martin County High School, and um, my grandparents uh, needed help as they got elderly. So I came back to Martin County and taught there for a while and then came up to St. Lucie. Awesome. And what was your program of study at Georgia Southern? Uh, primary education. Okay. So that's three-year-olds to third grade. Excellent. The young ones. Mm -hmm. All right. And what is your favorite part of teaching? I really enjoy that the children uh, think that I am great. <laughs> and I don't always get that from everywhere. But uh, you come in and everybody seems ready and excited to be there. Uh, they don't care that I can't sing on key. Mm. Um, and if something kind of goes awry, I really love that the children are able to adapt and change and just roll with the punches. And I just really love the age group. Yeah, those five-year-olds, they, <laughs> they just have such an extraordinary love for their teacher in kindergarten. Yeah, I feel like mommy all over again every day. So Yeah, that's, that's really awesome. And when you think about your kindergarten classroom and all the technology available to you, mm -hmm. how do you infuse technology into your daily routine? I have to say I love my document camera <laughs> because the children really can uh, be able to see uh, what's going on. Uh, put it up there for everybody to see and uh, I like to use the document camera. I do get on the internet for lessons, for ideas. Um, I really love Pinterest right now with all the different ideas that you get from everybody around the world about what they're doing in their kindergarten classes and what kind of neat centers and neat ideas that they're doing. So that's, that's a great uh, that's a great resource. I know and being able to share like you said worldwide with a click of a button it's pretty amazing. In, in fact I had to change, uh, I was looking at uh, Pinterest the other day at, not at school and uh, <laughs> And uh, it was somebody I had to I had to translate into English. Oh, there was okay. a tap drop down menu to, to translate the the directions, you right. know, where the center was, and it was very interesting. Awesome. It, it came from uh, Russia. Wow, yeah. that's neat. Very neat. So then you can share. I feel, I feel global. I feel yeah. global. Yeah. Absolutely, <laughs> sharing ideas from far away and mm -hmm. doing that translation. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And have you always known that you've wanted to be a teacher? I know you said you had some family members that were teachers. Mm -hmm. I have quite a few family members that were uh, elementary teachers. Um, my cousin is currently in the county teaching high school, which <laughs> amazes me. But um, no, I started out in college in pre-law and decided that, you know what, I was a nicer person. <laughs> Not anything against lawyers, but just a nicer, calmer person. And uh, went into education because I think that that's what I had really thought about doing all my life. Okay. And um, it just kind of fell on me. Yeah, yeah it hooked you right in. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and when you think about on your pathway from maybe changing um, in law school to uh, mm -hmm. moving into the education realm, was there someone on that pathway that was an inspiration for you to... Uh, you know, I've always, my mother has always been an inspiration to me. Uh, she raised us almost as a single mother, my sister and I. Uh, she was teaching, and um, I just remember her coming home and giving so much to her class that I felt neglected, which didn't happen, wasn't happening, but I felt, wow, you know, she's really, and as I grew older, I was like, wow, she's really got a calling. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, if I had a calling like that, I should answer it. And um, when I got disillusioned in college, it called me. Mm -hmm. What so, a great model, too. Yeah, to have she's that. a wonderful person. Yeah, Your family and your immediate mm -hmm. family growing up with that experience. And when we think about all the new teachers coming into the district, what advice would you offer a new incoming teacher? Um, well, I think um, I have three new teachers on my team this year, new to the district, and uh, they're non traditional, brand new teachers. But um, I tell them to be able, just to be able to 
take it all in in stride. And uh, sometimes I even have a problem with that. But um, just be sure that you keep up with and be aware of what's going on around you and that the people around you are your best resources. And uh, your administrators are always, all of your administrator I've had has always been willing to help with anything. And Ms. Burnett is a, is a <laughs> great example. And uh, just, you know, use the resources that you have. Absolutely. And just and make sure that... Make sure you enjoy what you're doing. Yeah, and they're fortunate that since you do have three on your team, that they have you also to be oh, able I to hope have they that, feel that way. have that leadership in kindergarten. <laughs> That's fantastic. And when Mrs. Miss Barnett, when you visit into Dee Dee's classroom, what types of things do you see and hear? It was very interesting hearing her describe how um, the students react to her. Uh, she is like a celebrity in the classroom. <laughs> the students are truly enamored with her. Uh, I see a lot of engagement in her classroom and what I am really proud of is uh, the mathematics that are going on in her classroom. In the, in, uh, at the kindergarten level, um, you'd be amazed how much math that's going on. So right now in Ms. Bradley's class, they are studying um, geometric 2D figures, two-dimensional geometric figures. And as um, a mathematician, I'm just so proud to see that happening um, at that level. And you will see a lot of manipulatives in her classrooms. Her students will um, use the manipulatives to help them compute math problems or figure out and reason with shapes. Um, she has a word wall in her classroom, writing. I love the fact that kindergartners not only um, work with computational skills, they also are developing their writing skills. And at this level, they need a little help from their teacher, so she gives them the writing stems, and they are able to complete the sentences. So that's amazing as well. Absolutely. When you're thinking about five-year-olds being able to go from random letters and you see that change, it's a huge differentiation for writing as well as, like you were saying, for math, that concrete with the manipulative. So. Yes. It's, a, it's a great um, step between uh, when they first walk in mm -hmm. the first day of kindergarten and when they go to first grade and uh, what they can do and what they can achieve. And you're probably seeing a lot of that flourish right now. January, February oh. are definitely I a always, lot of I always moments. thought that um, it was like the little train that could. He got, uh, January seems like everybody hits their old, the top of the hill with their train, mm -hmm. and then it's kind of downhill from here because they, all of a sudden it's like a little light goes mm -hmm. off, and you can see that in their eyes right. and their facial expression that the light does go off. Yeah. And they're just and, cruising. They're and they, they really love, learning, they love absorbing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's neat. Very neat. And what other activities, Miss um, Burnett, do you see DD apply as far as outside the classroom on campus? Well, in addition to being the grade level chairperson, she attends our BLPT um, meetings, our building level planning teams. She's instrumental in uh, bringing forth um, concerns regarding um, instructional resources to the administrative team so that we can collaborate and problem solve together. Um, she is mentoring th the three of our new teachers. Even though they officially have each a person assigned to them as a mentor, they find they, their way back to her because they feel so comfortable approaching her. And um, she's leading the effort in, on campus for the collaborative planning for her team. It's a challenge because it's something new. We started it last year, but we're going in deeper this year. So um, it's just working, you know, she's finding her way and learning how to communicate with her team and to bring everyone along and they are responding very nicely. Yeah. And so we're proud of those efforts. Um, she's um, also, what I, what I really like about um, Mrs. Bradley, uh, at the kindergarten level, we have the RTI process on our campus, the walk to intervention. So at the beginning of the school year, there's not a lot of expectation for, for, for kindergartners. She has taken on the challenge of starting that right away for some of those struggling students because the playing field is not leveled. A lot of, of our students have had preschool before entering kindergarten, and some of them have not. And she uh, leads the effort in her grade group to make sure um, there is a tiered intervention for those students who are struggling. And she volunteered 
to be the interventionist mm -hmm. for uh, the struggling students and then uh, the rest of the team, they split the core groups between themselves so that you can have a small teacher to student ratio to work with those struggling students. Well, that's exciting, spearheading that effort. And, and we, do you want to share just a little bit about that intervention experience as far as? Yes, um, well, at the beginning of the year, we, we know that we get the children that have not had the experiences of preschool and uh, even even uh, like a daycare, you know, and it's, it's really nice to be able to stay home with your children. But it's also good to let them get out sometimes too. And we get these, we get these little kids in. I lo we love them dearly, but they come in with with um, little or no skills uh, to tackle kindergarten. And we said, why why should we wait till January? We go ahead and get it started now. Try to catch them up the best we can. Um, I don't think waiting till mid year is it is a very good plan. So we said, why don't we just start it and, and get them used to doing it and get and just jump on them with both feet in the beginning so that we Absolutely. can get them get them going and get them uh, a little bit more ahead than they would be if we started later in the mm -hmm. year. More proactive, more prevention because you might get to this time mm -hmm. in the year and some of the kids that you might have flagged at this point in the year might not even need that at this point. They might be mm -hmm. up to where right. you and we have And we do meet on mm -hmm. a regular basis mm -hmm. to uh, evaluate those students mm -hmm. and where they where they need to go and, and if they've, you know, we call it graduation out of out of Ms. Bradley's class, mm -hmm. you know, and they go to a core group, and then that way that leaves room if someone else is struggling with something different okay. at that time to come in and and, um, and work with that. Terrific. And is that a 30-minute block of time? Yes. That you're doing that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. In addition to your um, regular day? S yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Terrific. And it, when you think about um, your classroom or things that you see, Ms. Renette, is there anything else that you'd like to share with us today? Um, any highlight or any story that you'd want to? Well, I don't know. Let's see. Um, she's always participating <laughs> in things that are the fun activities for students, but yet at the same time that they're learning. Uh, the pumpkin patch is a, a big seasonal mm -hmm. item that students um, like to participate in, but they have to do some type of writing activity or mathematics activity mm -hmm. where they may have to weigh their pumpkins or take their little unit blocks and stack them up and measure the height of the pump pumpkins. So she will tie those seasonal activities in with um, some type of core um, instruction. Um, I, we're also proud of the fact, I'd like for her to share about the African market okay. uh, because she really uh, spearheads that as well. Uh, and I have to give credit to my whole team. It it's it's truly is a group effort mm -hmm. for Pumpkin Patch and Pow Wow and African Market. But during the month of February, uh, we study, uh, we have maps and geography that we kind of oh, kind of keep going on with that. And what we do is we each uh, teacher in our kindergarten picks a, um, a country on the continent of Africa and we teach our class about that and what goes on and what they're famous for and you know we always like the gorillas of Uganda and things like that and Egypt is always fun um, and then we have what we call an African market and they take their passports and they go to each classroom and learn about that country and in my particular in my classroom I run the market and um, they are taught to barter with beans for goods that they have made throughout the month um, and so everybody has a different um, good to to sell to barter with and um, the fifth graders uh, we get the help from the fifth graders they come down and because they've done it before mm -hmm. and they barter with the children and um, it's a lot of fun parents the become involved the parents come in volunteers community volunteers mm -hmm. we, we have wonderful volunteers that really come in they come in and really interact with the children and when you look at all the content connections I mean that's just so large from social studies to communication mm -hmm. skills the bartering with the beans and manipulatives and mm -hmm. bringing in those learning buddies from fifth grade yeah it's, that's, it's, it's quite a production absolutely but and that's coming up then and it's coming up in, at the end of February the yes end of February. and okay. we would like to invite anybody who would like to come see that fun come on. absolutely send you an invitation. absolutely and, and when you when you plan for that um, is it all of the behind the scenes things that are happening now? I'm, yes. I'm sure right yes. now in, in part of the classroom. We, we uh, try to, um, it, it's, it, you know, it is, it is hard for scheduling when you're trying to get one thing out of the way and start another thing without finishing the first thing. But um, my grade level is very, very good about being able yes. to, mm -hmm. to, to, to do this, but we're thinking about this. and. Neat. So they're they're really supportive and a great great group. Absolutely, that sounds like a fun event. <laughs> it is. It's a lot of fun. I, like, I really enjoy. It. <laughs> sounds so. terrific. I'm glad that you mentioned that. That was yes. an awesome yeah. highlight to share. And um, when when you um, 
when you think about um, those events that are happening and the leadership that's happening, it, it's just such an effort, a collegial effort as well. Yes. And probably comes into your, I know that you're doing the collaborative um, planning, planning this mm -hmm. year. Is there anything that you'd want to share about that that experience with your team as well? Yes. Well, all, um, we do, we get together, and um, it, it and it's been a it's been a shift from sharing to collaborative planning, and and that's that's been a, um, something I think that kindergarten teachers everywhere probably have mm -hmm. a struggle with because it's so fun to say oh, we did this and it was so mm -hmm. fun, but um, to, for the planning to make sure that the children are really. Um, they're really internalizing the information, able to think on their own and think critically. It's um, it, it, it is it's a challenge and it's um, uh, a lot of fun to be able to sit with colleagues mm -hmm. and interesting to see what what they're doing and what they think and, and how they think kids kids work. Right. So because you know not everybody's not one person's right about anybody. Sure, absolutely. But um, for for you know what works for their works for their group or what works for this child and I'm having trouble with this child so let's try to do this and and I think that having the kids uh, the students think more critically about their world mm -hmm. and and what's really going on and, and things that they need to know as far as the common core mm -hmm. um, I think it's just going to prepare them even more for upper grades and a successful uh, career in school and life absolutely and the kindergarten team under Ms. Bradley's leadership is responding well. They do not like to be left out of any initiative that's happening on campus. Mm. So right now, as we plan to include more rigor um, in the classroom, the kindergarten team is also learning how to develop uh, different questions with different levels of complexity. Mm -hmm. So they are also offering that to our students as well, and, and the students are responding well. Terrific. Yeah. So sounds like a huge asset to Village Green. Well, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> She's going to be modest about it, oh, but exactly. yes. Yeah. We feel so. Well, we are we are really pleased that we were able to have both of you on today to share all of your happenings and exciting events at Village Green. Thank you. Thank and again, you. congratulations on thank your you. award, and we look forward to following the progress with you. Oh, well, thank you so much. Thanks for joining us. We will be right back with another Teacher of the Year. Welcome back to the 2015 Teacher of the Year Studio Interviews. Now from Weatherby Elementary, we're happy to have Cindy Winterkamp. Welcome, Cindy. Oh, thank you. And we're also happy to have Michael Hitzman, her principal. Thank you, Mr. Hitzman, for joining Always us. Always my pleasure. And first and foremost, we'd like to congratulate you on your award for thank Teacher you. of the Year. Thank you. I'm honored. We're excited to have you to shed light into some great things happening at Weatherby in your classroom. Okay. And with that, Cindy, go ahead and tell us about the grade and the subjects that you teach at Weatherby. Well, I'm a general education teacher. I teach first grade. Um, I've been teaching for 20 years. This is my 20th year teaching. Um, I've taught in the state of Florida. I've taught in North Carolina. Um, the first grade is where I teach now. I've also taught kindergarten. I've taught second grade, and I love first grade. First okay. grade's a wonderful age to teach. The kids are just so excited to be learning, and they're like little sponges waiting to hear every little thing that you have to say, and they're, they're exciting. And I think the amount of learning in first grade, when you think, I'm just thinking about reading, it's just you have such yes. huge growth and yes. levels. About this time, you're probably seeing really excited yeah, things. Yeah, the developmental growth and the mm -hmm. reading growth is all mm -hmm. kicking in right now. So they're getting excited about their own learning because they're really feeling that they have started to learn and are understanding concepts. So they're yeah. excited. Fun. Great to wake up every morning yeah. to go to first grade. Absolutely. Yes. And where did you attend school, Cindy, and what was your program of study? I attended um, in Fort Lauderdale. I went to Southeastern University. Back then it was Nova University. And um, I also uh, received my master's in North Carolina from Pfeiffer University. Okay. Um, both were in education, so I'm a big education major, studied a lot. A um, lot with differentiation, especially in North Carolina, and Common Core, they were starting 
back when I was there, they had already knew some things about Common Core and Marzano, so there was a lot going on there as well. And terrific, and I was fabulous. able to bring it with me here to St. Lucie. <laughs> Absolutely, that's what I was going to say. A great foundation yeah. to support to support other teachers and do some mentoring and modeling there. Fabulous. And when you think about. Um, teaching what's your favorite part of teaching i have to say like right now especially is the most fun in the beginning when they first come in they're still so young they're a little kindergartenish which i loved that grade i had taught that grade for 10 years but in second grade what i love so much is they'll struggle for a little while and then all of a sudden that light bulb comes on and you get to really really enjoy when they're sitting there and they're, they're lost for a moment, and then all of a sudden you, you'll, you'll see them just light up and, oh my God, I understand it, I know how to do it. And I'm like, yeah, especially the reading, because you'll, you'll hear them, I can read these words, I know these words, and they're so excited. You see their fluency growth, and their parents even come in quite often and share with me experiences and how excited they are over their child's learning. So there's a lot of rewards at both ends, through the students as well as the parents. Absolutely, and every time you see that, you feel that yeah. warmth. Yeah, yeah. We just yeah, love it. That's terrific. And then when when you think about technology, how do you infuse that into your daily routine? Well, one of the things I love in St. Lucie County is that we have a lot at our disposal. Um, we just started reading counts at our school, so our students um, are able to go on to, the, um, to read in the classroom and then can go on to the computer and assess themselves. They get immediate feedback. They get excited. They get competitive. But we, as teachers here in our county, we get to use um, our CAV system and we um, infuse um, PowerPoints into our lessons. We use uh, different types of game shows that we get to play with the students using um, the CAV system. And just, I had an incident once. Um, I, I taught summer school in 2012, and they had um, someone come in from the community to um, bring he brought all different types of animals in for the kids to see and we um there was one animal in particular um it was a bird that n none of us knew about i didn't even know about it so i we went back to the classroom and since it summer school that year was at Weatherby. I had my computer there and the use of uh, the CAF system. We went on and we researched it right there and then. So it was immediate feedback with the kids. They got to find out what the bird was like, where it, you know, where you would find that particular bird. And they were really excited. It is exciting to have that at your fingertips. Right at your fingertips, yeah. right there. It's wonderful. It's yeah. great. It's, it's terrific. And just to be able, like you had said, that research, right to be there. able to put that right in place immediately. Exactly. Yeah. Great, terrific. And have you always known that you've wanted to be a teacher? Um, I have to say no. I didn't know that. As a matter of fact, um, I worked for Nova Southeastern University, and that part of our benefits package was that we um, we were allowed to take classes. And I had two small children at the time, and I wanted to help them in education. So I thought, well, let me go to school and make sure I'm doing some education courses so that I'm helping the teacher in the right way and not teaching my children the wrong thing and that was it <laughs> i walked into the classroom you know i had to do a few observations and i saw what the teachers were doing i was interacting with the kids and i just i fell in love with it i said this is what we do i mean i, I want to do this this is it and i um that was it i went into teaching and kept going and just i didn't stop learning i learned right along with the kids um shared every all the knowledge that i have acquired and i loved it and i my kids were were even um, so excited about the fact that when they did come to school that they I taught in their school so I knew I was gonna quit school I picked out the school that I wanted to work and work in and I met the principal I um, lined everything up so I could do my student teaching at this particular school and I had everything all planned out and it worked Aww, it was great it's a great so, story yeah, and yeah. how special for your kids they love it for they love it kids. as a matter of fact my youngest was with me for a while in elementary and then in second grade she decided she wanted to go to an another school. So I said, okay, you can go to our home school. And uh, the next year she came back. She goes, no, we're so special here. Everybody knows us. <laughs> so there's there's a nice benefit to that too. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. That's fabulous. And when you um, think about that pathway from when you went into those classrooms to learn uh, with your students, with your own students and your kids in school, um, was there someone along that pathway that inspired you, one of their teachers or a family member to be a teacher? Um, I have to say my parents were very supportive. 
they were always wanting me to make sure I had goals and set my sight on something high. Um, and when I told them I was going for education, they backed me 100% and were excited. Um, you know, going to school, I had to, I worked during the day and I went to school at night and I needed support from someone to watch two small children. So um, my mom and my dad and my mother-in-law, they all pitched in. It was a whole family effort to take care of my husband work nights, so he couldn't do it. So um, they came over, put the kids to bed. I had to do the studying and they've continued. I'm, I'm national board certified. so. When I was doing my national board certification, I had my little one on my lap and <laughs> typing away, and um, the family pitched in again. You know, by then I had I had a third child, and they all pitched in to help out. So it's been a family effort. My family has been so supportive to me in education That's and get, receiving my degrees. Yeah, and you're definitely a lifelong learner. <laughs> yes, yes, now, that's true. Your national board, what um, area did you uh, receive that in? The uh, general, general education. General education, okay. um, primary. Terrific, absolutely, that's awesome. And we have lots of new teachers coming in. I know you're a veteran teacher. What advice would you offer a new teacher coming in? Well, I'm really excited because I just had a student teacher um, this past semester, and she's here, she's with us at Weatherby, so I'm very excited. And I am. Um, really told her to just be sure to stay organized, stay flexible. Um, she's taking over in the middle of the year, so I said stay firm, you know, keep your routines going in place and everything will fall into place for you. Know that you have me here to help you along the way. And even if she didn't stay at Weatherby, I would have always been a phone call away. I always encourage them to um, to keep in touch and I'm still in touch with my mentor who I started with 20 years ago, so we still keep in touch. Yeah. And I would have them do the same thing and I told them I'm there for you, so, and I'm her mentor now, so it's Terrific. great. Terrific. Yeah. And she, what did she stay on in first? grade no, as she's, well? she's in kindergarten, okay. but right down That's the hall. Great. Very nice. Excellent. Yeah, it's wonderful. And that is terrific advice, I mean, to be connected with people that can mentor you and support you along and ask for help. Yeah, there's we so much that. going on that, you know, they're new, they're, they're, they're not sure what questions to ask. So, we, you know, we go through the calendar, things that are coming up, how to do, you know, if she has any certain little problems that are coming up in the classroom, how to organize things, how to interact with parents, things to look for in the mm -hmm. cubes, things like that. There's, it, we can go on. <laughs> it would yeah. take a while for us to go on all the things. She's but. very fortunate. As the rest <laughs> of the Weatherby staff is as well. What an asset. Terrific. And Mr. Hitzman, when you visit in Cindy's classroom, what do you see and hear? Well, obviously, you know, I mean, Cindy does a phenomenal job with the children. Uh, it, it, you know, she's been with me quite a few years now, and each year I, I, I notice a person that really, truly has the kids' best interest at heart. You know, we're kids at heart, uh, kids at Hope School, and she definitely uh, embodies the kids at Hope philosophy. You know, she truly cares about each child as an individual and makes a, a, her point to make sure that every child feels special in that classroom. Um, you know, obviously she's very knowledgeable in her, 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 her skills and she uh, has a lot of good tricks up her sleeve to make sure that her students are always learning. You know, mm -hmm. we have a lot of different things that we do throughout the day and we talk about data. We just met, as a matter of fact, about data today. And, and again, we're always constantly talking about what are some of the things that we can do in the classroom. You know, uh, I, I kind of point out that Cindy is a teacher of teachers because, you know, she's the person that you can always count on to have that, that nice idea that's going to help. And in fact, she's saying with the new teacher, that's the things you see in the classroom as well. You know, if a child's struggling with a particular um, problem or, or something that they can't solve, She's the person that you can help find that solution to help them learn that. Today, again, like we were talking about data, and she just is the person that you can say, okay, what happened here? And she can come up with some great strategies to assist us. She also wears a lot of other hats, and I think that, you know, I, I can brag about her a lot in the classroom, and, and that goes real easy, but I also brag about her as what she does for the school environment as a whole. Uh, she's done a lot of training for us. She, she's done her writing training for us. She's obviously, as you just heard her say, a uh, clinic certified and she took on a student teacher. And, you know, you, you talk about that student teacher and, and that person came to visit me a couple of days back and the one thing she went and said, well, I'm going to go see Cindy and, you know, about some other things because she is the person that, you know, not only the new teachers go to, but experienced and veteran teachers go to her alike because she is so very knowledgeable in not only the educational part, but the personal parts as well that a teacher has to take on. Um, as far as family involvement, you know, she does so much with family involvement as well. She was, uh, did provide a workshop for us just recently on a family night that we had, uh, among many, but that one just comes to mind again because she, we were helping our parents help, learn to help their own children. 
and of course uh, Cindy stepped up in this winter camp and, and, and did a beautiful job helping our parents uh, have a, just one more bag of tricks in their repertoire to help them be successful with their children. So she wears a lot of different hats and that's what I really appreciate her from grade chair to you know our co coordinator so many different activities that we go on and, and I can always count on her to be there not only for the kids but for the school. Absolutely. So why there be lots of campus activities. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And is there anything else, Cindy, that you'd want to share with us about um, your classroom or a highlight before we wrap up? Well, I just have to say that it also comes from administration. Mr. Hitzman is great to work for. We have a great rapport. If I have questions or concerns, his daughter, he has an open door policy. And that's, that's important to me as a teacher. I have to have a principal. I have to work with a principal where I can go to him or her and say, listen, I have a problem. You know, you know I need this. I need that. Can, you know, can we talk about it? And they're right there for support. And I know that I can go to him at any time. And he's right there supporting me. And I think that's why I work so well. Let weather be. It's a good fit for me. Right, right. I'm so happy to be there, and I'm very honored to be their teacher of the year. Yeah, well, we're we're really happy that we could spend this time with you both today. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. And we wish you well. We're going to be excited to watch the progress. Okay. Well, yeah. thank we're you. We're excited. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining us. We will be right back with another teacher of the year. I hope you find a home. I hope you find a home. Hey, maybe you'll be picnic. Maybe you'll be picnic. We've been caged together too long. We've been caged together too long. How come nobody ever picks me? Maybe they're looking for somebody different. Pick me. Well, the shelter's closing up for another day. We didn't get picked. I know. Tomorrow. Guaranteed. Welcome back to the 2015 Teacher of the Year Studio Interviews. Now, from Fairlawn Elementary, we have um, Kelly Rydell. Welcome, Kelly. Thank you. We're happy to have you here today. And we also have uh, Jennifer Hadeen. Yes, ma'am. Kelly's principal. Thank you, Jennifer, for joining us. Thank you. We're happy to have you here and also want to congratulate you on your award. Thank you very much. It was a great honor. Absolutely. And with that being said, um, Kelly, would you go ahead and tell us about your role and um, what position you hold at Fairlawn? I've taught at Fairlawn for the last 10 years, all the years that I've taught. And the first eight, I was a second grade teacher. Last year, I was a first grade teacher. And this year, I've moved into the role of media specialist. So I feel like I've got to know all the kids as they've gone through. Yeah, that's terrific. So by both being in the classroom and now being um, seeing all the classrooms. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I get to see those children that have passed on and see how they've grown and developed and matured as young little boys and girls. Absolutely. And I know that we talked a little bit about um, how you can make that happen in the library. So it's going to be exciting to hear all those ideas. Um, go ahead and tell us about where you attended school for college and what your program of study. Right out of high school, I went to Old Dominion University in Virginia, and I originally planned on being a teacher and was somewhat sidetracked at the same time I worked for a professional hockey team, and that kind of changed my focus. That and I, in my first semester of actual being in the classroom, a couple teachers who were, had been going through some transitions said, maybe not the best place at this time, I wouldn't tell my daughter to be a teacher, and because I had found this new love of sports and sports marketing. I changed my major and continued on. Still wanting, you know, still loving school and everything about school. Moved to Florida um, after college, had my family, and when my oldest son was in kindergarten, spent a lot of time volunteering, and my heart was just there. The love of education and school had never left, and I have to give props to his kindergarten teacher, Miss O'Keefe from FK Sweet. I mean, it was like, this is where I needed to be. And it was just perfect timing when FAU opened their um, campus here for education, signed right up, and haven't looked back since. Great. So you did have a huge inspiration to you. It was. To um, come back to teaching. And it was having children, my children, and watching them grow and develop and how... I could read something in a book and then I see it happening with them at that age group and what I can do to enrich at that point was so inspiring to think that I could bring that to all those children that I, you know, applying the, the research to practice mm -hmm. is something I wanted to do. 
Absolutely, for sure. And when you think about um, teaching, both in your classroom experience and now in your media specialist role, what is your favorite part of teaching? My favorite part of teaching is definitely the light bulb moment. That aha, I get it, or you know, when they're making connections. Mrs. Riddle, this is like we learned with the pilgrims came over. This person's going through that same thing. So I love the aha moments, and I love strong passion. Can't even love isn't even a big enough word to when you put the right book with the right child, and they're asking for more, and they want to go deeper, and they want the next book in the series, or what else has this author read? And Mrs. Riddle, I learned this that I didn't know about. I want to spark that love of literacy because I know that once they have that, that will stay with them and affect their learning for a lifetime. Absolutely. And how awesome that they get to go into the mm -hmm. media center and be able to be touched by someone with that passion. So that's fantastic. And when you're in the media center or in your classrooms that you integrate with, how do you inf infuse technology? Um, I use technology so much, especially in the last two years, but as much for myself as in presenting to the children because this transition with Common Core when I was in first grade and now not having a set curriculum for the library, I use it for professional development. I, I'm a member of many different blogs. I use lots of different um, teacher-based websites to get that spark of idea for myself to help design lessons and take a little bit of here and a little bit of there and try to put it into what my children need. And then I also use it in the classroom on a regular basis with fourth and fifth graders as part of instruction and working with um, their teachers and helping them learn the research process. St. Lucie County has so many great websites and um, different avenues of research available that they didn't understand. So we've worked really hard on trying to get the children comfortable in accessing the different online databases in order to be able to do their research at home and at school, but then also to use their um, the destiny sites to create their own personal reading list. So they're also tracking their independent reading. And they have, they are in the process of owning that and utilizing it and sharing it with their parents. I've had a lot of parents that have texted me or called at night, how do I get on that site again? My kids are talking about it. I, I want to use it. And that to me has been my biggest goal for the year. I, by the end of the year, I want them all on it and I want their parents on it and knowing about it. And that is terrific because what better way to communicate those goals or those lists or even those, the asset of resources that we have by having that portal mm -hmm. with Destiny. It's makes amazing it. because it's there for them and it's going to help them bridge that gap that is coming when nonfiction is going through tablets because mm -hmm. it's just the way it's going to be and it's hopefully going to make that transition that much easier. Absolutely and the parents I'm sure really value that mm -hmm. when you get that feedback as well. They like being able to have that resource available at home. The difference I explained it they, before that they are going to the store to have to go buy a dictionary CD-ROM or they're taking their kids to the different libraries from one library to the next. It's all right there for them now yeah. through our homepage. It's terrific. And um, we talked about how you knew um, your pathway of a teacher and someone that had inspired you along the way was your um, children's teacher, which was a great story. And um, when we have a lot of new teachers coming into the field, what advice um, would you offer to new teachers coming into the role? I would say get to know your students. I told you how I love to connect students with books, and you can't do that if you don't know what their interests are. You don't know if they're having a bad day, if, they, if you don't know who they are and you can't tell what their norm is. So I think it's very important that they, they have time, make time, because the first year teacher, you're overwhelmed, mm -hmm. but you need to make time to get to know them. They need to be very organized and create management systems because that will give them more time to spend with students and to seek inspiration. Find a mentor, a person that you admire, either their teaching style or their philosophies. Seek inspiration, as I said, on the internet, going back to the school that they were from and talking to professors. Because once you go behind those doors, it's easy to forget that there is so much out there for you and so many people willing to help. Right. So just remember to reach out. 
Absolutely. to all those different people. Mm -hmm. For sure, that's excellent advice. And Miss um, Hedin, when you visit into uh, Miss Rydell's classroom, what do you see and what do you hear in her classroom? You know, in her in her media center and working in classrooms, yes. I should say. I am so blessed. I really am. Um, you know, you go into the media center in this school, and I've been in several schools, and it's just so nice. I mean, the kids are relaxed. You can hear Miss Rydell either reading to the kids, which, you know, we don't always do enough of, and uh, just the environment is so calming. She's advocated this year to get furniture for the media center so the kids can sit and relax and just have a good time. And she's put up props and made the um, environment almost part of uh, a book. It's amazing to see um, she's had things blown up. And it, it's just a really nice environment. She, the way she speaks to the children is sweet. She does have the relationships. And in today's world, we're learning more and more about how building those relationships is so important. And uh, you know, she's not kidding when she says people are texting her. She gives out her phone number. Mm -hmm. People are contacting her. You know, I need help. Can you give me any suggestions? She's always available. And her media center is just so calm and well organized. And the kids just truly enjoy being in there. I enjoy being in there. Um, so many different things going on all the time. And she's, she really does. She's not lying when she says constantly researching new mm -hmm. things to do. So it's really a neat place to be. Yeah, when you think of a media center, it's so special when it's the hub of the school mm -hmm. and it's the buzz. And, and that's, that was my overall goal. I spent mm -hmm. a lot of time this summer thinking about flow and, and how it would be comfortable because mm -hmm. I want the kids to feel like that is their safe place. Mm -hmm. Come in in the morning if you have, need help with your homework. If I can't help you, we have older kids in there to help. If you want to go sit on a bean bag and talk quietly with your friends. Because through you know being surrounded by books and in that positive atmosphere, it just hopefully will bleed out, and mm -hmm. they will be inspired to take a book off the shelf while they're there. Absolutely, <laughs> you can't just walk in and you're going to be absorbed in the reading feeling. Yes. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. terrific. And when you think about other activities um, that Miss Rydell participates in on campus, um, what what types of things would you want to highlight for us? You know, she does a lot, and it's interesting because. Um, I don't ever have to ask her. She comes to me, it's amazing. Um, I, we had our professional development day back and she came to me with information that she wanted to present to the staff. She's taken on many different roles. Um, she's kind of spearheading our reading counts this year and she wanted to give the teachers more professional development so she's led lots of professional development. Like she had mentioned Common Core last year, you know, getting everybody ready for that environment. Um, she's taken on yearbook this year. Um, we lost our yearbook person so she took that on. Um, with a colleague and she's in charge of our St. Lucie County Fair. She has a really cool idea we're going to do for the St. Lucie County Fair based on technology. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> and, um, you know, it's not, you know, I can't even begin to um, describe. I, I wrote notes only because she has so much, she's done so much research to find things for the school. I've never had to ask her. She comes to me, listen, I need money for this. And, you know, a lot of times we don't want to hear that, but I do want to hear it because she has these amazing things and it's not just for her. It's always for stuff for the entire school. It's not about her. It's always about the school. And um, I think that's what's so re um, refreshing is she says, I found this great website. It's this much money a year. Teachers can use it, this, this, and this. Let me train them. And she trains them. She's trained teachers on new software we've gotten um, as far as the videos. What's the videos called for Scholastic? True Flix. True Flix, which are all nonfiction um, videos to encourage children and hook them when they're starting on those new topics. And it's just amazing the um, amount of information that she's constantly putting out to the teachers and we, we only have a few new teachers but even those teachers she's kind of pulled up and helped and given some advice to and you know having that she had that experience with those teachers 10 years mm -hmm. you know before she started teaching it tells you what you don't want to do and ha what kind of a teacher and mentor you want to be and so we're very blessed to have that in her. Absolutely, so, a huge asset mm -hmm. for Fairlawn, and I see the vision threads mm -hmm. through everything that you <laughs> yes. share and speak about and um, tell us, so that's really amazing. Mm -hmm. Now, um, before we close, is there anything that we didn't talk about that you might want to highlight, uh, Mrs. Rydell or Mrs. Hadeen? You asked if, you know, I talked about the kindergarten teacher that was my son's teacher. When I teach, that's how I've always gone about it is, what would I want for my own children? I want to be that person for my own children. And yes, it was the kindergarten teacher that inspired me to go back, but I also have been blessed to be around so many teachers growing up. And as I prepared for this, I was reflecting on what to me made a great teacher or why, did, why you know, 
with my experience in life, why are these people standing out in my memory? And I think it's just um, when somebody loves what they do, it just sh it, they shine. And I feel very fortunate that I've had the contact with so many teachers and that I also work with so many teachers that love what they do that overall, out of, you know, the children and past teachers and present teachers, they are my biggest inspiration. Absolutely. It's contagious when mm -hmm. you mentor and you learn and you have those inspirational experiences. It, it just helps us get you know, more, more mm -hmm. in tune with how we want to be and how we want to serve our children. So, absolutely. absolutely. Well, it's been a pleasure. And again, we'd like to congratulate you on Thank your Teacher you. of the a Year Award for Fairlawn. Thank you very we look much. forward to following the progress. Thank you for joining Thank us you. today. Thanks for joining us this week for Teacher of the Year interviews. We will be back next week with more of our Teacher of the Year studio interviews. Mm -hmm.